Thank okay. you, Anne. Well, welcome you all to the BBC um, annual annual monthly meeting. And um, I'm going to skip the minutes for now and go right into the presentation. I'm not sure who will be leading that. Uh, did I hear Jeffrey would be the person doing that? Oh, could you hold one moment? Because there's a member calling me. Maybe they can't get in. Hold on one second. Are you trying to get in? Because the meeting's starting. They didn't send you a link. OK. Uh, OK. Nancy, Lucy Air. Tell me the email address. Okay. Lucy Air, L U C Y E Y R E 31 at gmail.com. L U C Y E Y R E. L U, L is in lucky, U C is in cat, Y. And then air, like Jane Eyre, E Y R E. 31. Okay. 31. All right. Okay. You're on, Lucy. She's going to send it. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Let Lucy come in and uh, hopefully hey, Wendy will be here. Mark, shall we start? Uh, I'll be glad to introduce everybody. Yeah, please. Okay. Why don't you start? All right, all right. Uh, I think most of you know me. I'm Mark Wiseman, Chair of the Library Building Committee. And we've got our uh, design and construction team here uh, to make a presentation to you. I thank you for, uh, for having us here tonight. Uh, so from uh, our architect's office, TSKP, we have Taisu Kim and uh, Joy Ortiz. Welcome to them. And from our landscape architect's office, we've got um, Jeffrey uh, Paracchio and Cynthia Jensen. Welcome to you guys. And uh, from our uh, construction manager office, Kyle Lantini is with us. Uh, and our consulting arborist, Alan Fenner, is also with us tonight. So um, my understanding is that uh, uh, Cynthia, you were going to be leading off uh, this presentation. If I'm wrong, um, just uh, uh, with Jeff's assistance here, um, just please uh, step up. But I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Mark, Cynthia, Ty uh, let me just. Uh, Would you like to say something, Tyson? Yeah, I want I want to say where we are. Okay, uh, thank you. Process, and then I will turn over Jeff and Cynthia explain the design and site plan issue. Okay, uh, you know, we've been working on this project last uh, maybe 12 months or more. Uh, it's slow going last uh, uh, 10, 12 months, but we are making a good uh, progress now and we finished the DD design development we call last uh, 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 two weeks ago, two weeks ago, and we turned the design development floor into Downs construction, and they are doing a design development cost estimate, and we expect hear from them uh, November seventh, oh, second. So, second, okay, second, so, the cost estimate of our design uh, development cost, and we hope everything going well, and then. Uh, we move forward what we call construction document. That's the final uh, drawing for the construction. And uh, we are supposed to finish construction document uh, mid-January and then uh, go up to bid and hopefully sometime late February or early March, we start construction uh, of the library. Uh, Prosser Library and McMillan most are on seed schedule, so we are moving forward uh, same uh, schedule. Now we have submitted uh, our site plan drawing to planning and zoning, and uh, there will be a, a public uh, meeting uh, this week, Thursday. Thursday the 27th. 27th. And We've got another one is uh, November 17th, uh, uh, another public hearing from uh, planning zoning. So uh, 
Uh, that is a schedule right now. And so I, I understand uh, you are mostly interested in uh, how the landscape is done outside and so on. So I'd like to ask uh, Jeffrey and Cynthia uh, uh, present design of landscape with the exterior concept. So, okay, Jeff and Cynthia, you all. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Jeff, I think um, now would probably be a good time. We can bring up the plans. Um, and just to echo Tosu, thank you very much for letting us present these to you. Um, we're excited about it, and uh, we just want to share the landscape design uh, with you. That's part of the improvements to the library. Um, we'll start with the, this is the uh, Prosser Library. Uh, the library will be rebuilt. Um, there will be some parking at the lower level, similar to now, uh, but there will be some expanded parking that happens across the brook. One of the nice features of this new library is along the south side, there's going to be a porch and a bridge connection right there where Jeff is uh, pointing along the south side to make that walk between the library and the parking lot a special feature. There's also going to be a new entry plaza. Uh, the main entrance will be at the southeast corner of the building. And so there's a, a nice entry plaza that will be kind of facing town hall across that intersection. Um, one of the uh, things about this plan is we did work, we are working with an arborist, um, Alan Fenner is here, and who did evaluate the existing trees on the site. There are two large existing oaks that are along Tunxis Avenue and another large oak along Mountain Avenue. We are able to save one of the large historic oaks on Tunxis Avenue and the other one on Mountain Avenue. And we are actively working with Alan, our arborist, on developing tree preservation plans and specifications that will be implemented during the construction process uh, to help preserve those trees. The arborist did recommend removal of one of the oaks, um, which is in poor and declining condition due to a vascular disease. Uh, there are large areas of decay and deadwood in the crown and at the crown connections. There's also uh, fungal fruiting bodies that you are visible down at the base um, from Ganoderma, I believe is the term, which is associated with um, basal stem and root decay. So essentially the crown is being supported by a trunk and a root system that's already in decline. And so it, the removal of that tree was recommended. Um, I think, um, as I mentioned, Alan's here. So I think we'll go through the presentation and if there are any uh, questions afterwards, um, he can certainly answer some more in some more detail. As I mentioned, the other two oaks are in good condition and we are actively working with him to develop tree preservation plans and specifications to protect those during construction. The plantings are designed to complement the new architecture, so we have been working closely with the architects on the design and placement of appropriate plantings. We're also very conscious of uh, maintenance requirements. And so the focus is on a fairly simple design with really tried and true plants that we've used in many landscapes. There are three layers of planting that we'll review with you. There's the tree and canopy layer, also the shrub and ground cover layer, and the water quality basin wetland plantings, which will be in the Northwest corner of the site. Starting with the tree layer, we are adding street trees along Mountain Avenue. Uh, those will be pin oaks to match the existing oaks. I'll let them catch up there. There we go. We are also going to be um, introducing a river birch grove, the native river birch, to accentuate the porch and the bridge, and then really create a cohesive connection between the library and the expanded parking with another river birch, river birch grove at the entrance and the end of the bridge um, at the parking lot to really create that a nice focal point. The parking lot uh, will have large canopy shade trees. There will be the native red maples around the perimeter and then a couple interior plants, uh, interior trees in the parking lot islands. Those will be the alley elms, which will add a variety of multi-season interest. 
along the north side of the building, uh, there will be some native dogwoods at the new entry drive coming in off of Tungstis Avenue. For the shrub and ground cover layer, uh, there's a major shrub bed that will be along the south side of the building in addition to the birch grove to add this kind of layering and screening effect along that side. Uh, basically, you're gonna have the porch up above and there will be some exposed building face below that. And so the intent is to really mask that and screen it with the river birch grove and this mass of shrub plantings. The shrubs will be a mix of the double file viburnum, the mountain fire andromeda, and some native plants, the Virginia Sweet Spire, Itea virginica, and the uh, native inkberry, and then uh, some ornamental grasses along the front for interest. There will be a large shrub mass on the north side of the building underneath the dogwoods, and that'll be a mix of the native oak leaf hydrangea and rhododendron. There is also um, at that corner in the northeast corner, uh, there is a new dumpster enclosure, which will be a solid board fence. Uh, but then there will be this again, layered approach to screening for that dumpster enclosure. There will be some vertical accents. Um, Arborvitae will be the vertical accents. And then there is a kind of step down approach again of the Andromeda, the native Itea and some grasses to really try and screen that enclosure from Tungsis Avenue. At the entry plaza, uh, there will be a focus on evergreens. So there'll be a mix of um, hollies, boxwood, the native inkberry, uh, silaripe for ground cover, and again, some ornamental grasses for accent. Moving up to the Northwest corner uh, for the water quality basin, and sorry, I forgot, there is also a small water quality basin that will be um, kind of just south of that river birch grove by the bridge. We have been working with a wetland scientist on those plantings. The edge along the woods will be some red maples to really kind of knit this back into the woods. The water quality basin will be two different types of native seedlings or seed mixes. The bottom basin will be a wet mix which is gonna have a lot of uh, your native sedges and rushes, including um, some more ornamental flowering plants like your milkweed and your ironweed. The sides of the basin will be a conservation wildlife mix, which again will be a mix of native grasses and wildflowers. We are also introducing some large shrub masses of individual native plants, plants like the uh, clethra or the summer sweet, um, elderberry, um, trying to think the others, uh, oh, the sweet flag iris, some joe pie weed, uh, just to name a few. And we can go over the specific plantings later. We do have a plant list available to take a look at. Uh, I think that's it for Prosser. So if we wanna jump to um, McMahon. So the scope of this work is more limited. Uh, there will be renovations to this library with a new addition on the east side facing Blue Hills Avenue. The site work, there will be some improvements to the parking, um, including some upgrades to accessibility and to paving, a new dumpster enclosure, and also an outdoor children's learning garden um, just off of the children's wing. We are preserving three key trees on the site. And again, we'll be working with Alan to develop some tree preservation plans and specifications to protect these trees during construction. The trees that we are able to preserve, there's the large 15 inch sycamore just to the west of the building. Uh, there's the memorial dogwood in the children's garden area, and then a memorial cherry tree, which will need to be transplanted um, just outside of the new building footprint. The plantings are going to be similar to Prosser, just for continuity, and we find that it often does help with maintenance. The parking lot will be large shade trees. Again, we'll be using the native red maples around the perimeter, the LA elms in the middle, and then there will be two pin oaks to kind of, I'm sorry, three, to, uh, to mark the entrance of the library. 
The front entrance is a new walk, a new simple walk that'll be flanked by two Zelkova. And it'll really frame the entrance with underplantings of boxwood and ground cover. And the intent is to really kind of cover the ground quickly and mass it together uh, to help limit the amount of weeding that would be required. The reading garden, which is off of the children's wing, will have a small paved area with seating. There will be a hedge for separation and screening, and then also a mix of grasses and daylilies and hosta and some shrubs and ground cover throughout that area. There also is a water quality basin on the west part of the site, which will have, again, the two different seed mixes. In the bottom of the basin, there is the native wet mix, which will be a mix of the uh, sedges and rushes, again, with things like milkweed and some other flowering plants that can tolerate the wet conditions. And then on the sides is the native mix of the grasses and the forbs. So I think that that's a quick overview of the two different libraries and we'd be happy to answer any questions. And again, uh, our arborist, Alan Fenner is here who can answer any questions uh, regarding the existing trees as well. Or Jeff, let me know if I missed anything. No, Cynthia, I think your explanation was very well done. It gives a good okay. overview, overview of both sites. Um, I believe we can open this up to questions like you, like you mentioned. Okay, um, thank you very much for the description of the both sites. I'm going to um, start with uh, people on my committee if they would like to ask questions. I can't really see them right here, so hold on. Um, if you have a question, why don't you, um, Lucy, or I don't know if Wendy's here, or Mary, or any of you have a question, uh, please ask before I speak. Um, I have a question about the chain link fence around the uh, wet area in at the ex other library. Um, is that going to be like an attractive looking fence or is it just a fence off or, and is the total, I, I don't remember seeing a body of water there. Is there a body of water there? Currently, there is not. Um, that is mainly for water mitigation off of the new uh, parking lot, the new surface parking lot off to right. the, off the east. Oh, so it's um, a drainage thing. Is that what you're saying, water mitigation? Okay. Co correct. Correct. It'll, it'll essentially be a um, a catch hold for okay. for for runoff from the parking lot. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of the chain link fence um, question, uh, that material is still being worked out. Um, it's essentially because of the depth of the basin itself right. um, for, for a safety precaution. We, we, we were intending this lawn area to the south of the basin to be used for recreational activities. Mm -hmm. um, so we just want to make sure that this basin was essentially protected and that um, people wouldn't be able to find themselves just be, being able to run essentially into uh, right. the, 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 the basin itself. But in terms of the material, that is still being worked worked through. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, let me just start. Okay. Does anybody else on the committee have a question? Um, okay, well, I'll start if... Um, Lucy, Lucy has her hand up. Lucy, okay, Lucy. Okay, mm -hmm. hi. Um, uh, over at Prosser Library in the Birch Grove, um, one of the problems that we are having over at Town Hall is there was a river birch that was was planted very close to uh, the existing building. And we learned in a recent uh, walkthrough that, uh, you know, they, they grow very big and very large and very wide. And so I just am concerned that maybe one of those river birches might be planted a little bit too close and would be needing, you know, when it uh, approaches 50 feet, start needing some pruning back um, from the side of the building. So just, you know, I'm, I'm just curious if, if there's been any uh, consideration of growth and in proximity to the building. Sure, sure. They do get wide. Uh, Jeff, do you know what scale this is? That's certainly a consideration. And thank you for bringing that up. Um, 
that will work as we refine these. Um, this is currently yeah. 30, 30, 30. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we can start, we'll be working to refine some of these plant locations because as you mentioned, they can get quite large. Um, they'll be down below the bridge, but we certainly don't want to have any branches that it would be overhanging the bridge right. or porch at that location. Yeah. Can you not get on? Hi. Um, can you see if you can get Wendy on, please, Nancy? She can see, but she can't get on. Um, well, I'm looking at the birches, and I feel they're the wrong plant for this place. Um, birches require uh, more work. Than they're, they're, first of all, they're short-lived. They only live 50 to 75 years. I'm hoping that we're thinking beyond that. And um, they, when you have wind and we have now climate change and which has affected our weather patterns, they have broken branches, a lot of branches that break down and they grow very tall. So eventually, as um, it was said, they're going to hide this uh, balcony and be above the balcony. So it doesn't seem to make sense. And I'm, I'm looking at the overall site and I guess my first impression is it's very sterile. It has no feeling of an outside room that kids or young people would want to come and sit outside. In fact, I see very few benches, um, and maybe that's something I, I do realize that this is, you know, not the finished plan, and that's why we're here to discuss and talk about these things. But um, it just seems odd to me that the front of the building, the east side seems to have no no landscape except for the pin oak and the this part of the landscape faces over to the town green and um so that that's a concern of mine why there's nothing on that side um the plaza um big plaza nothing on it what's the design for that are there sitting spaces um yes you put some green hollies in but uh, these hollies that you've selected the blueprints um they have sharp points to them so um are people going to want they'll have to be pruned it's a maintenance thing because being pruned will keep them from hitting stabbing somebody as they walk in um there's a ramp that you enter to go into the building but nothing hiding it. Um, it's just, you know, the, it, I, I think it's uh, a four foot uh, ramp going up. And um, how is that being designed so that it's more aesthetic? Um, and as we walk around to the south side, to me, and after going through all of these plants here, it's an abundance of plant material. To me, overkill, many, much too many plants for the space. There seems to be the kind of feeling that everything will be planted and it'll be instant gratification. And three years down the road, how will they be maintained? And will they then have to remove plants to have it look like something? So that's a concern. Um, if you're going to put birches or whatever tree you put there, you're talking about putting uh, an ornamental grass morning light that needs some sun, so you don't want it hidden by trees. And how will that be affected? And all the other plants, if the birches or, or whatever tree is there is hiding over them. Uh, it's, it's as you go through, and then the, one of my most concerns is you have as one of the plants you want to use is Euonymus coloratus. And that is an invasive plant on the East Coast. I do not recommend it. I cannot see you using it anywhere and you have hundreds of them specced. And not only are they bad for the environment, but they're invasive and the birds take the seeds and you have over to your uh, south side by your parking lot, you have wooded areas. And once those plants get uh, released over there by the seeds and start growing there, they'll smother out the native vegetation, which is a nice thing you're trying to plant more native vegetation higher up on your plan, but um, right now, you know, it's it's there's no problems with that. I would not want to see an invasive takeover. We already have barberries and EACs and other plants which do that. We certainly don't need to add to that mix. 
Um, my question too, and I see no detail, is wh what's happening with the bridge? It, it, there seem to be no details to indicate how it would be finished. And maybe that's something that's coming along, but I think it's an important detail of how it connects the parking lot to the building um, and also the plaza. Uh, the plaza is spec for concrete walk. Uh, I feel that's the wrong material. This is a Leeds building. Shouldn't we be thinking of materials that will also be used on the outside like pavers that would be permeable pavers? It's a much more exciting uh, entry uh, statement and for it, for it to be there. And uh, I think there was another place where we felt like the, the um, pavers should be used. And so that instead of concrete, I think that was discussion. It was originally, I believe, in your beginning talks, you discussed that you would use pavers. And then when they weren't sure you were going to get the money, it was cut out. But I'm hoping that you will put that back in. Uh, also, it, you know, it, the pavers on the um, you go out. So go down the walkway and then where the bridge is at the end of the bridge, it, it seems to indicate there's another concrete walk. The walks that we've had put in our town are just awful. White concrete that blinds your eyes when you look at it. And if you go over and look at the police station, they've had concrete walks there. And after a number of years, when they go into this need repair, you never can repair them to look the same again. And it's a shame to build this beautiful building and create this landscape and have ugly um, concrete, you know, associated with it. So I hope that you might consider thinking of that a different way. If you had to still keep concrete over near the uh, walk, um, the walkway leading into the parking lot, maybe that could be a colored concrete or something that could blend and complement if you use pavers at the rest of the area. As far as the plaza, I go back to that. What kind of considerations are you giving to seating? I see no seating in this anywhere, and I don't understand that. And maybe I just missed it, but um, people go outside now. They don't stay in buildings as much. With COVID and everything, We have they want to be outside also. They can go outside and read a book and it's healthy for them. And there is now Wi-Fi provided by the town. So I would like to see that somehow some kind of seating is provided for people to be able to um, be outside in nature here. Um, what else did I have? I, again, I question on the north side, the dogwoods. We have some plants that are on this property now that we were hoping wouldn't be um, totally removed. And some of them are memorial plants also. And I see you did that on the McMahon property. So maybe that's something that you just aren't aware of we could talk about. And in the and question was where the dumpster is. So many plants again, overkill. And why are we using the ubiquitous arbovite um, Provides the tall ones, the green, uh, emerald green. Um, surely there's something else we could be more creative. I, I can appreciate using plants that you're comfortable with and that you used before and have proven well, but this is the 21st century and our gardens have changed. And I think we have to move with the times a little. And some of the, there's so many more options that we could use that maybe we wouldn't have to use those arborvitaes. They just seem inappropriate again. And let me see what else did I have. I, I like the retention ponds. I think I, my question would be who's going to maintain those? How are they installed? Is that something that the town has to be responsible for once they're put in? Are there spigots on the outside of the building to water plants um, and electricity? I know this is not the right plan for that, but I just wondered if there were electrical outlets and uh, spigots in all the maintenance that we do, the BBC to take care of other gardens in the community, we find that those kind of things are sort of left off of the buildings are an afterthought. And they really could be used for events and for watering and stuff. So I haven't heard any or didn't see anything that talks about how are all of these plants being irrigated. 
there's a lot of questions to ask you. So <laughs> hope you got all these and I'm ready to hear your answers. And I can always come back with a few more. And I think there were others. If Wendy got on, I believe she had some questions to ask. And I think that was all. I did have a question, Dan. Is this the is this the ever source of at the top uh, facing Tonks Avenue? There's a big uh, rectangular um, um, here. Um, I yeah, know, box. Is that by Eversource and can that be hidden? It's pretty ugly. It's an existing transformer in, in the traffic and the tra it's indicated as an existing transformer and traffic control box. So <clears throat> it certainly could be screened, but it's not the town's utility. So to a certain degree, we're, we're at the mercy of the utility provider. But um, we could screen it, right? We could, we could screen it. Yeah, we could screen. Um, I got I got a question why we're looking into that same area. Um, the existing 48 inch pin oak that's going to remain. Would it be there's an existing there are two existing non compliant ADA parking spaces on Punxsus Avenue at that location. And maybe this is something Alan could think about it if you think it would be an improvement but if we were to normalize the curb line and eliminate that bump out, um, i.e. eliminate those two spaces, I'm not sure if, if it's necessary for those in the parking count, but I'm thinking if we were to drift the existing curb line out and the associated sidewalk away from the tree, would it possibly you know, help us further protect the tree? So I, if, if I don't know if the design team could look at that. Um, you know, my comments are, I don't know, my dad used to say all politics are local. So being that DPW is going to be responsible for maintaining the property, I guess my comments are are associated, a lot of them are more, or my, my questions are associated with maintenance. Um, just a general comment we're creating so much impervious area on the old Riley lumber property. I understand the need for a water quality basin. Um, I think the level, we often get complaints about water quality basins and their appearance. Um, so if the intent is, is that it's going to be left natural and not maintained, I just think it needs to be noted because a lot of times when they become overgrown and sometimes we get um, invasives in there, like Phragmites, if they're wet basins, um, you know, maintenance for us sometimes becomes an issue. Uh, and then while I'm on the topic of water quality basins at the McMahon Wittenberry Library, I do understand there's a, a small addition, but is there is there really a, a need for that water quality basin? Um, it, it is a, a good lawn. When we used to have summer concert series across the street behind the fire department, we would spill over for seating there. And again, it's it's a piece of infrastructure that we're gonna maintain if it's necessary it's necessary, but if it, it it doesn't seem like we're creating a significant amount or additional amount of impervious area at that library, I guess I would just question the need for that water quality basin, or if possibly we could meet the need with something maybe subsurface. I don't know, just something to think about and if the design team could look into that. Um, I should have prefaced my comments uh, Mark and the design team, I appreciate you coming out and, and meeting with the BBC. Um, you know, we're all very excited for these projects. It's a long time coming. It's going to be a big improvement to the town. And again, just our, our thanks for, for listening to us and, and working with us to make this the best project that we can. I had one question about uh, the kinds of plants that are going to be used in areas where uh, children are going to be walking. And um, I know that someone mentioned holly, 
And I know that uh, holly berries are extremely toxic and yeah, young yeah. children. I so I, I just wonder if that has been considered things like uh, berries. Yes, I think in that children's area, there are no holly berries in that sitting area. I think that's the one you might be referring to. So yes, it certainly is a consideration. Yes, we do a lot of schools where we do pay close attention to to the plants. Okay. Um, so I'm just double checking and there are no hollies in that children's sitting area. Thank you. I'm a retired teacher. And when I hear things like that, I'm very <sighs> weary. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I did have a couple of questions about the other library, but um, I think that was all of my questions for now about the big library and about maintenance. I still was concerned a lot of these plantings in the main library require maintenance. Um, grasses have to be cut down. Liriope has to be cut down every year. Um, how many plants, when you put uh, a pl uh, shrubs in a bed and then you put liriope under it, how much space are you leaving for the shrubs? Questions like that, if you might be able to answer. Uh, so I'm sorry, were you referring to the Prosser Library? Right now, or, I, I, you're, st you're showing yeah. the MacMahon, but I'm still on the Prosser Library. Okay. And, and I'm I was sorry, wondering you... if you, I was on the Prosser Library and I was wondering if you could answer the questions I had about the plaza. What were the plans for the plaza and how was it going? How is that space going to be used other than just being a, a space with no seating? Uh, well, um, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to yeah. say if if uh, if Tai Su would mind commenting on the plaza um, since that's in his his purview. Uh, but let me, let me comment on seating, uh, why we don't have any seating. I think we will have some seating in front of that green, uh, evergreen plant area. I don't think we're showing that. But main seating area of this entire library is this front porch facing south. It's 12 feet wide porch connecting from Plaza to the bridge. It's like a traditional porch. You have lots of chairs. And so on. we designed so that south side of that uh, porch has a, a high uh, cable so that people can come out uh, and high chair and sit have a coffee or even lunch and so on. So that is where the major activity, outdoor activity is going to be. And so uh, I think emphasis of uh, outdoor sitting area and enjoying the, the outside will be happening at the porch. The plaza is more of a certain public activity such as, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, I, th I can see some uh, sculpture, outdoor sculpture maybe display, and I can see some Cheers. I think we are showing some chill. Uh, Jeffrey, are we showing some chairs in front of that evergreen? Yeah, we are. I think so. Yeah, chairs. And where, so, where are you showing? I don't understand. That, that, that one, right? Right. And next to that is, is a bicycle rack and, and so on. Right so, right yeah, we, we will look at that whether there is more opportunity to. Uh, uh, placed, uh, placed uh, chairs in uh, in that on that plaza, but I, I think idea is uh, it's a uh, this plaza is more public activity uh, place and and uh, I certainly don't think it's a good idea to chop up that plaza and they introduce each of each small piece of uh, uh, landscaping or so many other things. It, it is only a public uh, paid area of the public to do certain activity as they wish. 
and I think more intimate outdoor seating will be happening at the, at the porch. With all due respect, I disagree. And it's not organic. It doesn't allow, it's very nice you want to be on the porch, but a lot of people don't want, want going to want to be there. They would like to be able to sit under the beauty of the trees. I'm not saying you have to put in a lot of break, breaking up landscape, but you have over, you have abundance of landscape that no one can make use of in front of the south side, and you have nothing on the east side. And I, that doesn't make sense. And, you, you know, like it, it's a plaza, the, the way people, the traffic is, they will come from the light and they will walk in and they, there's an entrance there they can go in. But what if someone wants to come and wait for a bus to come or they want to wait for uh, sit outside because it's a nice day? Not offering them any options feels very um, exclusive. And, and you have a whole front of your building, which people will ride by and see, which has nothing but one tree on it. And that feels odd and doesn't feel very um, friendly. And, and, I, and I don't see you know, why we would say only, par only seating can be on a, on a porch um, with trees that eventually you won't even be able to see out because the trees will block it. it doesn't make any sense. And also, it doesn't make any sense to me that we want to spend a lot of time and money to plant an area to the back of Washbrook where nobody will see it. Um, and and there doesn't seem to be any indication, and maybe that's not your purview right now to deal with, but how does it connect to Philly Park? It just stops. And it's it's a lot of work and a lot of plant material for an area that basically no one's going to drive by or see. So I don't, I don't quite understand how you were thinking that would be important, that back area at this time. Are you time. discussing yeah. the, uh, the water quality basin area? At the far in back. The yeah, the far back, not the one in the front, but at beyond, you can't see it on the picture right yet. Yes, back there. Right, right. Yeah. That is really um, more of an ecological feature. Um, I don't okay. know about connections you know, to the park. I don't think that was part of and Jeff can chime in part of the uh, the scope of this project. Was Correct. there any yeah. scope of your project to have an exit to get to the shopping center, which is to the left, which is to the west? How do you get to that from here? You have a parking lot and no access to the um, area that's right next to it. That's a shopping center. How, how were, were people, they, they, there's no access to it. Was that a consideration? Uh, I, I don't believe it was. Um, I don't believe there was ever any discussion regarding the need or desire to be able to access that parking lot from the new parking lot on the Riley Lumber site. I believe if you go to the design review and go and look, you did, it was discussed there. So we'll I'm certainly sure. yeah, yeah. take that into back. consideration. Yes, I hope you yeah. will, because I think that that's important to, to, you know, it's not supposed to be so you can't connect to these places. If you want to make it a walking town and have people walking, then they need to be able to get to these places. So I'd like to see that considered. Um, you know, I, I understand that this is a, a landscape in progress. It saddens me to think that we're being told that it can only be one way and nothing else. So that, that's my thoughts about that. And if you'd like to go, if you, if you want to comment on any of the questions I ask, I think that would be helpful for Mark and others to hear um, if you wanted to. And then I could ask you questions about the other library. I think uh, one of the comments, one of the things that we always try and balance on a lot of the projects is, um, I know you're concerned about maintenance of density of plantings, but what we have found to be, we're trying to balance um, having too much of an open space where you end up with a lot of volunteer weeding that has to happen and covering the ground quickly is a lot of what we focus on um, in terms of the dense plantings. I think that was one of the questions. Okay. Um, so we do try to strive that balance. Um, the concern really being that if we're not planting enough, 
there's a lot of bare ground that's left open and that leads to its own maintenance problems as well. So we do typically try to um, obviously not plant plants on top of each other, but plan for uh, things to be able to fill in more quickly um, so that it doesn't allow a lot of the, the volunteer weeds to come in. Okay. My experience with overplanting in my 35 years of owning a garden landscape business is that when you overplant, it's nice in the beginning, and yes, they'll fill in, but they get to a certain point and they have no room to grow, and then you have to spend time maintaining and pruning because they don't get light and they start to yellow and plants start to die out or they become too big and there's not enough space for the existing plants. So I guess it's a catch-22, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't, um, kind of. Exactly. Is, yeah. It is, yeah. Um, let's see. I think I did want to follow up um, in terms of the invasive plants. Um, we do check the invasive plant working group plant list, and I was not aware. We haven't seen Euonymus coloratus on that list. Um, so I just want to make sure that um, we'll certainly double check it and take a I look. I hope you will, because purple um, winter creeper, yeah. OK, yeah. I'll take a look at that. Um, certainly, we're aware of the winged Euonymus uh, being an invasive plant, which we never use. Um, but the Euonymus coloratus, um, We'll double check that, um, but we were not aware and we have not seen that on the list. We'll take a look at that again. Okay, um, thank you. Because yep. I know on that list sometimes, and not in particular with this plant, but sometimes we have seen plants where they are not considered invasive, but sometimes they're just put on as a potential warning. Um, but we can double check that. Um, and, and I would answer that as a potential warning is something that in our town, I think we should be concerned about because we are trying to put pollinators, as you've been doing some here, and uh, more sustainable plantings and more native plantings. Um, in this planting, we're using Asian trees, a number of them. And we're not, you know, we have to be considerate of how our uh, how our plantings, how they're going to project for the future. And even though we all grew up thinking all these plants are great and everything, and you know, it, it's not invasive now, but even as they start to become invasive, why let them get to the point that they will become invasive if we have the opportunity to substitute another plant that might not have those issues to begin with? And that's all I'm asking you to consider. Certainly, yep. And you had mentioned uh, memorial plants at Prosser Library. Um, well, there is a dogwood on the north side right now that was dedicated, I believe, then. Is that a Kusa dogwood? I think it's a Kusa um, that was planted. Um, we, it was on the town green. <clears throat> they put it back over. On, and it's on the north side. Uh, it's a dogwood yeah, so there. Sharon, so um, there is a dogwood there, and I know Bart is familiar with it. It probably, it probably just brings us into a, a, a another topic is um, that dogwood and some select plants along the south side of the building, and we wanted to harvest to um, transplant at different properties. Um, and in addition, Bart brought up to me the blue stone that is in the existing patio area on the south side of the building. Prior to demolition, we would like to we would like to uh, salvage that if that is possible. Um, I'm not exactly sure if the demolition how the demolition specs are written, but there are a few select trees and that blue stone that we've identified that we'd like to try and um, salvage prior to the demolition of the building. Okay, and is that something, go ahead, Jeff. I was gonna say, um, as we progress these plans further, I believe it'll be um, a good idea to 
identify all of the memorial plants on the process site as well. So we can make sure that all of them are covered and, and each um, tree or shrub does have a plan of action. Okay, that sounds good. Could you elaborate maybe a little on your thoughts about pavers for the plaza? So initially we did have um, decorative pavers uh, for, for the plaza. Uh, essentially it was uh, VE'd out of the project uh, in terms of cost, um, which is why we have a uh, concrete with uh, certain joint styles. Um, unfortunately, it's something that I'm not entirely sure about how we can reintegrate it without any additional funds coming into the project. Um, I don't know if, if, if TSKP has any comment on that as well. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's no comment on, on, on my end regarding the, the plaza. Um, I, Jeff, yeah, I can, Jeff, I can comment on that um, because Thanks, Mark. Uh, we will be having some additional funds coming in. So we're right in the process now of working with our construction manager uh, and TSKP um, to bring back in uh, things that were taken out. So um, yeah, you're looking at us uh, at plans when we were in a, a state of panic because we were way over budget. And so um, <clears throat> we have, we do have some additional funds. So we're gonna be working through that. So, so appreciate um, these comments because we're looking for, you know, what, what's gonna become priority in, in putting things back in. Now we, we do have some, uh, some other resources. Yeah, I think once we get the estimate back on November 2nd, we'll have a better understanding as we're, as to where we are in terms of the budget. Well, uh, Jeffrey, I was thinking while I was looking at the drawings, uh, now as Mark said, we have more fund uh, available. So I would, I would say this, uh, as a base bid, we will go out uh, as a, as a uh, brick stripes breaking up concrete paving area, series of, uh, well, this pattern shows there is a pattern. It will be different pattern, little larger square, but we'll have a brick, uh, eight inch wide brick, uh, creating the grid like pattern. So that it doesn't look like a large uh, uh, concrete paved area. And uh, that, I would say the base bit, but I would like to uh, see as an alternate, add alternate, I would say, as a, uh, the plaza area is totally paved with brick uh, paving. That's why, why I uh, envision. And also uh, steps will be granite instead of concrete. Uh, so it, it does very, uh, as a very uh, uh, quality, entrance area uh, with the brick and stone and also those retaining a wall uh, also like to see a, a stone uh, faced both sides so you look like a, a genuine stone wall so I, I look for this plaza area built high quality good public entrance uh, paved area uh, so it's not uh, and just concrete paved, concrete step. So we hope we can accomplish that. So we will be uh, de detailing at both ways. So as a uh, budget allows, uh, we will get much higher level of finish of the project. Would that be the same for the bridge too? Well, bridge, uh, most likely bridge is built by a uh, uh, bridge, uh, manufacturer, but we will specify the flow. And what I will envision is uh, this uh, porch area is, is a floor will be a, a hardwood floor. So it's like a traditional porch, you have a wood floor and that same material wood will continue on the bridge, but we will introduce every uh, every feet, uh, uh, foot uh, non-slip strip so that you would not slippery in uh, uh, incline of weather. So uh, uh, we will see a continuous same wood material 
uh, continue from the porch all the way down to the bridge and so that people have much more friendly, warmer feeling of the bridge. Certainly, I don't like to see this bridge become a, uh, a industrial looking bridge and the uh, uh, bridge will be painted all white, same as a, a front porch column and rail. So it has continuity of uh, integrity of the building. So that's what I said. And, uh, and that's the way we will uh, detail the building and the bridge. And how do you see it lighted? <clears throat> Pardon me? The lighting. The lighting, yes. The, the rail height will be about that, uh, about 30, uh, 40 inches high, and we will have continuous light uh, just below the rail so that you don't see a light source, but the uh, bridge will be continuously lit. Uh, so same as the ramp area, we will have a handrail and the light will be attached under the handrail so they it lit uh, all along the, uh, uh, the ramp. And also we have a series of uh, uh, rail grab bar, I would say, uh, to step. And this, we will do the same detail, light will be attached under the uh, rail so it's hidden. I mean, but it would lift the uh, step and braille. Would that be solar or would it be electric? I'm sorry? Would it be solar? Solar? Would it Did be... you say solar? Yes. yes. Would it, yeah, be... it will be, uh, the light itself will be a uh, 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 very efficient light. Uh, uh, LED? LED yeah. light. LED and light. And we will have a solar panel on this roof. So yeah, I would say, uh, the certainly uh, the solar panel generated light will light this uh, the outdoor light. Not only outdoor light, I think enough light to uh, uh, light uh, substantially in interior lighting too. Okay, that makes sense. Can I ask, is irrigation um, part of the design right now? No. There is no irrigation here. Okay. None. So and, there's and no. I would assume it's the same as Wintonberry, no irrigation. No. Okay. It, so, are you saying there's no irrigation plan for this at all? No. Well, why? Why not? Well, I mean, uh, do you have a public uh, outdoor irrigation? Yes, okay. I believe. Dan is. We do it? on several of our properties. Yeah. And there's irrigation I mean, if here. If it's not, if it's not irrigated, you know, it just has to be kept in mind when we're obviously when we're selecting plantings. That's all. Well, I would like to remind everybody that there was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars spent on a landscape for the new three thirty building, and in their wisdom, no irrigation was put in, and because of that, there are no plants now in the back of the building. They, most of them have died. They talked about rain gardens. Well, you can't have rain gardens. You don't water them or if you it just, and it was more than just that. I mean, there was things that had to do with um, how the um, drains worked and everything, but these were things that weren't taken into consideration. And there are many plants that are dead in the front and the back of this landscape. And I can't see this happening again that we're not gonna put irrigation in. You're gonna have hotter summers now with uh, climate change. We have to consider that. And um, there are areas, birches do not thrive in dry weather. Birches, when the weather goes, when the soil goes dry, they drop their leaves. So why would you want your leaves dropping in July when they could drop in September and October? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense again. I hope that this might be a consideration. It's, um, as Dan said, you know, it's it, it's something that we've had there and they had to put it in in certain areas to keep the plantings alive. And so I guess that's why I don't understand why you wouldn't put any irrigation in, in any areas. What, what was your logic behind that? Maybe you could explain that to me. Well, we have done many buildings and uh, landscape. But I haven't seen any public building, outdoor landscaping area uh, irrigated. Uh, that's that's something. Can you, Cheryl? Can you comment on that? I haven't seen any our project 
about uh, landscape area irrigated. I mean, irrigation very specific certain area like a you know playing field or something like that, but not general uh, lawn area or or garden area. Sharon, can you comment on that? Yeah, I'm not no, sure that I think Dan problem. could talk about that. I'm not sure that yeah, was I mean, problem. Yeah, I mean, we, we do have irrigation at some of our buildings. Um, you know, we, we put irrigation at this library within the last five or six years where there was none before. Um, I mean, obviously, if the landscaping, you know, we're not going to be... We don't have the ability or the or the manpower to, to, to water. You know, we're not going to go around with a water truck. So, you know, if if irrigation is not in the budget, then we ought to we ought to be designing landscaping spaces that you know with with drought resistant plants. Um, some of the areas here are going to be wet adjacent to the brook, but maybe not near the building. So, I mean, I would say if even if the project can't support irrigation, maybe any type of plumbing um, or, you know, a, a sleeve to accommodate future irrigation should be considered. I think that's actually um, part of our pursuance of gaining lead points is not having irrigation on the site. Wow, interesting. Okay. So it's for water conservation. Yes, I know there's two sides to, to those issues and you know, obviously we have pressures to make our buildings look managed and kept and, and good. So, you know, we're on the, uh, we like irrigation side of the, of the coin, but I understand that the pressures um, to not have it. And I didn't realize that LEED certification had a, uh, had a, uh, um, uh, you know, had a uh, impact to that, but that's good to know. So if, if nobody, you don't have any other explanations, if you would change to the other plan to the branch library, please. Um, so if you could blow it up just a little, please. Well, okay, okay, yeah. Don't go much bigger than that <laughs> for right now. So um, on the on the Blue Hills Avenue side, I believe when this garden was uh, this building was being planned, again, I'm gonna bring those benches out. This is where buses come, and people use that to you know get buses. It doesn't seem to be any area in the front to sit and wait for a bus. No, no seating outside. I know in the back. Currently, there is a picnic table or something behind where that sycamore is. Um, but what kind of consideration have you given for seating for the outside of this building in the front, if you could answer that? And is this purple area close to the new addition? Is that, that's just gravel all the way around. There are no plantings there, is that correct? That is correct. And so your only plants are these two zelcovias that get 60 to 80 feet high and 14 boxwood underneath them? In the front, yes. In the front. That's all your landscape is in the front. Correct. And the transplanted memorial cherry. And I the think cherry. Um, the, the gravel, and um, Tosu Kim can comment in, I believe that's because it is under an overhang of the building. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, that that is correct, Cynthia. The the main purpose of the gravel is to correct is to collect any runoff from the the roof drainage. So so as you travel around the building, there seem to be no plantings except when you come to the far um, south corner, which currently nobody uses or goes to because this is uh, a shopping, uh, not a shopping. I think it's a car uh, uh, parts place next door. 
And so there is woods that goes through here. Um, you have a garden here now. And the question was by one of our members who, who hasn't been able to get on is in she works with children and she wondered about this children's garden that there doesn't seem to be any details for it. And she was wondering, is it, is it handy? Is it um, accessible for people in wheelchairs, uh, kids? How do they get into this? It seems like you have a hedge of tall eight foot arborvitaes in front again. What well, was the, the purpose of that? Right. The, yeah. the access would be through the building and Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, we do design the sites to be fully accessible. Okay. Yeah. And there is some seating shown in there. Um, Jeff, there are other types of seating that um, I noticed the benches, but. Just in that area, is that what you're saying? Correct, Correct. right we, now, yes, go ahead. There, there, there are two benches on the, on the northern side of the, the reading garden, as well as on the south side, we do have uh, seat pods uh, spec to, um, to show as like a, a classroom environment where you would have a presenter um, and you could have uh, kids coming out um, in, a, in a classroom environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the main yeah. the main purpose of the arborvitaes to the on, on the west side is essentially to screen the garden from the parking lot. Um, there there is access on the north side here, uh, which feeds into the main entrance from the west side. So so you have your walkway, but then all and the only other thing you have is that you have these. Um, Oh, I think what were these? I think these were Pieris Mountain Fire. So you've gone from a very high shrub that covered almost all of the wall to now you're reducing it down to something much shorter. Um, is there anything else? Is there anything that there, you know, yeah. there are there um are some the Pacassandra, some daylilies, uh, some fountain grasses. And some pasta. I'm just trying to go through the list to make sure I got everything covered. So those pasta yes. are down on the on the um, south side. That's all, that's only in that one area. There's nothing anywhere else, is there? Are there hostas? in terms of the pasta? No, just yeah. in that area. So yes. just this one area. So. Right. No benches anywhere else for teenagers or anyone to sit just for children. Obviously, these are mostly younger children or but it's a very specific thing here for this one minor garden here, this garden. But where else is there anything provided for the young people who come to this library? Uh, that's certainly something that we can take further into consideration in terms of providing some seating. Um, I think the main intent was to provide some seating on that Southwest side, um, the seat pods for the children, and then the two benches that are at the North end of that seating area. But um, that is currently what we have planned. Okay, yes, I think that, I mean, I don't know, have you, have you talked to the librarians about that? Is that something that they would wanna see there? It and seems like something, I, I know that we, not that I'm saying we want to do this again, but they've always liked it that we had flowers there and that we had something of color and it wasn't just a green landscape. And the front of the building now is just a green landscape. It's green on green. And it doesn't seem to have, you know, that feeling. It's just not, it's just sterile. And this is not a sterile library. It's got beautiful details to it and it's new and modern and glass and you can see into it. But I just questioned that the landscape is it's not there yet. That's all. All right. So that's... Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll certainly take that into consideration. Um, I think... Um, Again, it was the thinking in terms of maintenance and looking for some very quick ground covers that again are gonna fill in this area um, to avoid any additional weeding. Um, and then letting the, the trees provide that multi-season interest um, up above.
Okay, well, um, hold on a second. Let me just see if we can. Do you have, do you have any more questions? Let me see if you, I'm going to put you on speakerphone and see if they can hear you. Okay. Um, can you can you hear Wendy? I'm going to put her on speakerphone. She wanted to ask questions. Okay, see if they can hear you, Wendy. Speak loudly. Yeah, um, I use my keyboard. Uh, the, the plantings that you have um, for the, the uh, children's learning garden. Um, why wasn't uh, native planning uh, considered, especially if you're going to use that space as a teaching garden? Um, there's not much interest from a kid uh, with a hosta, uh, and there's there's nothing you can teach them um, other than. Um, Pastors are a pain in the ass to dig up. Um, but in my experience working with children's gardens is that we use native plants for uh, to teach pollination, to teach the habits of bees and butterflies, and so forth. Would you consider uh, choosing other plants that would be more useful in an instructional setting situation. I think that, uh, and Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that the, um, I don't know that the intent really is for this to be a kind of hands-on teaching experience, or maybe Taisu Kim can comment as well. Um, so the focus was not on necessarily in terms of having this kind of a working garden area um, for teaching about plants. I believe it was more to provide an outdoor space for potentially reading and things like that. Um, but we can certainly, you know, take into consideration um, the addition of native plants for this area. That would be a lost opportunity for sure. So I'm glad that you're thinking about inclusion of other plants. Okay, do you have any other questions, Wendy? I have a million of them, but you know, considering the hour, no. Okay, all right. All right, um, I, I thank you. I don't know if anybody else on my committee, I see Wendy's hand was up, so it can come down, and my hand can come down. Um, 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 I mean, Sharon, one of the things I think is, is um, I mean, certainly the, the design team can refer to the recording to review, you know, some of the, the points and topics that you brought up. But if you as a committee want to generate a document that maybe you can, we can send off to them, give you a little time to absorb what you've seen, um, you know, and that's, I think that's something we can, we can continue, you know, the, the, uh, the discussion with. And that might be a, an opportunity just to kind of summarize everything and pull it together and give them something that they can refer to and, and then see how they can potentially address some of the things that you're talking about. No, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, I'm only trying to be constructive, having lived in this community for over 50 years and done mm -hmm. a lot of plantings and things. It, it's, it feels, you know, we, we want to work with you. Um, we want to respect what you've done, and we're hoping that we can collaborate and, and make it even better. So that's where we're coming from. It's certainly not to say, you know, this is terrible and no, we have to do this. You know, it's more like, well, how can we come to a meeting of the minds and make it all work to fit all the needs that we feel, you know, our community and our town would like to have? No, certainly understood. And we tried to make notes on everything. So if there is a summary, um, that would be very helpful of your comments okay. and concerns. Okay, we can do that. And I can get from the others to Dan. So that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So I think that would be all from our committee at this point. And if we think of anything else, we'll put it on that document for you. And we really appreciate you coming and sharing this with us. 
um, it's very helpful. And, um, and we'll go from there. Well, thank you, Sharon. <clears throat> A lot of meaningful comments and we appreciate all of them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, take care. Okay, bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, team. Thank you. We're, we're going to stay on. All the committee is going to stay on. Yeah, committee is going to stay on, continue the meeting. But uh, we we thank everybody for taking the time to uh, give us a presentation tonight. It was it was informative and it was helpful. Yes, thank you very much. And Tatiana was here, and I will want to re to read what she wrote to the committee. Um, if once all everyone leaves, <laughs> and we'll we'll go with our. Committee, we'll start with our committee. Is everybody here now? Yes. Okay, goodbye, Cynthia. And Bart, welcome back. Um, oh, Bart, is he still here? Oh, so everyone's here. So this was Tatiana who was listening. And she said, I don't get why architects decide about plants. Outsource it to BBC. No, thank you, Tatiana. <laughs> Sharon, you are so well composed and gentle, but assertive in your voice. I'm sorry, I didn't read this ahead of time. Um, I'm all of you. Wendy is right. Make it diverse with interesting plants. Why limit it to what becomes sterile normal? Why have sterile become normal? So I hope, um, Bart and Dan, that you felt that we weren't trying to be destructive, but you know, there was a lot of maintenance there to do. Nobody wanted to talk about it. <laughs> and, and, you know, not using water, just, I, I didn't want to be put on, I thank you for whatever you said about that. But um, I thought it was a good beginning. You have to discuss those things. If you don't bring them out, how are they going to know how you feel? I can't hear you, Dan, you're on mute. Yeah, you're right. And and I, I I did think it was interesting, you know, the LEED certification and I understand the water conservation aspect and, you know, sometimes our wants and needs kind of clash with each other, you know, sure. so yeah. that was, you know, that, you know, and that, so I, I better understand why, because there was a big push to make the building LEED compliant. So it's good to, um, you know, it's, it's good to have this dialogue so you understand what drives some of the decisions sometimes. Oh, absolutely. But but interesting, ironic, they would choose plants like birch, which do well in a moist area. You know, so that's sort of counter to mm. well, don't use plants that aren't drought tolerant. Doesn't that's not right. very leads oriented. Right. So. so well the Riley lumber property would probably be fairly wet, but the the, the library up near Tunxis Avenue is going to be, you know, that's pretty parched up there. Right. In the summer. Yeah. Yeah, so it would be, and I guess my biggest thing is getting rid of, and I, I know we can't get rid of it, but that, um, um, what do you call it, transformer in the front. We, we have all of these buildings. We have the Wintonberry Mall, we have the Philly Park, and we have the library that have these ugly transformers right in front of the new buildings and the new planting mm -hmm. spaces. And, but is that a code that they have to be in front or can't be hidden anywhere? No, the it's not a code. It's the uh, it, it's the utility company that drives it. Okay. You know, and they're they're you know they're setting their ways. You know, and and to get any real comply or get any cooperation out of them at a design phase is almost impossible. So you're what, muted, Sharon. I know. I so why don't they put the lines underground? Cost? <laughs> well, I mean, they will be to the building. I'm assuming. You know, I think I think the utilities are underground in in downtown. That's true. But they got to have transformers that you know that can step up or step down the power. So, and again, to typically the utility company doesn't have the structure to work with designers. These decisions all get made during construction. And they're kind of one trick ponies. Yeah. There, Sharon, Sharon, there is a large vault under prior to that uh, transformer at the intersection there um, that's underground that most people don't even see. They drive over the top of it. So there's a large underground vault there and the power goes all the way through the intersection of Mountain Avenue 
communications and power is in there. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. that there is, that they've made the attempt for sure. Oh, so, so this, they didn't, but this last one that's standing, was this an older model or it's something that when they put the others underground, could they take this and put it underground too? That one's, that one's specific for the library, the one above ground. Oh, specific. yeah, I don't know. It probably steps down the power for the library. Um, I honestly don't know if they put transformers underground. I don't think they do, but uh, don't hold me to that. Well, I, I did want to, you, you made a, a suggestion to take the curbing that was around the pin oak and bring the curbing out and eliminate that parking space. But if you eliminate that, if you notice they have a ramp for people to come in to use if they can't, you know, if they need a wheelchair or something, where would those people park if you take away that parking space? Well, there's there's handicap access at the back of the building. So we don't, yeah. and those handicap spaces on Tonsus Avenue are not ADA compliant. So, so I, honestly, if they don't need or don't have to utilize those for parking spaces, I would like to see them drift the curve away from the tree and the sidewalk away from the tree right. if, if it will help protect the tree. Because the existing sidewalk, I don't know if you walk out there, it's it's the tree is grown right into the back of it. Right. And if you're going to rip that sidewalk out and replace it, you're going to be banging away right on the existing roofs. And my only point was, is if you, that's not, it's not, they're not really good parking spaces. Tungsis Avenue intersection, it's hectic, it's busy. You know, we got a brand new building with ADA compliant parking and, and access at the back and, and on the Riley Lumber property. And if we could help protect that tree, I'd like to see him do it. Well, the, it, one of the meetings, I don't know if you were there or not, they did vote to um, to put some money aside to take care of around that pin oak, that one that was left. Yeah, and they're, they're going to have a tree preservation plan. I know that. Right. So that but, that was, they did put money in for that. So are you saying that the ramp that's there on that plaza, that is for people walking across the street who would come across the street in, a, let's say, crutches or a wheelchair or something, and then they would come up to the plaza and then walk up the ramp? Because now you're saying they're not really going to pull up in a car and park there because that's part, it would be part of the road. Well, right. So Building code requires that the that the entrances be ADA compliant, so they would need to put a ramp there regardless. Oh, okay. and it's just the proximity of the parking spaces to the ramp. So what I'm saying is, if you are, you know, it's it's not given that an older person would just walk up the ramp rather than going up, you know, five or six steps. Yeah. Um. Um. And and then obviously, if there was a handicapped individual who truly, you know, needed the access they would be better served to to utilize the 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 handicapped access locations that are provided for them specifically they're a little more convenient than coming through the plaza okay okay well do any of you have any questions or anything um it was it was, it was a robust meeting I, I think they were probably taken aback by us, but, um, you know, we, we're not going to change anything. Did you have something to say? Wendy is my associate here in my, my cell phone. <laughs> no, I just said I'm glad they they um, were a little taken back by us. And, and these are questions that needed to be answered. And there was a lot of hemming and hawing. Well, we'll take that under advisement. How much will they take under advisement is my question. But you know, I'm the resident cynic, so but I'm glad I'm glad the questions got out. Very glad. Good. Good. Okay. Well, um, with that said, unless there's anything else, I'm gonna go to our meeting if anybody unless anybody else has anything else to say. Um, so we're gonna start with the approval of the minutes from September twenty-seventh. Did everybody have a chance to read them um, before there was something in it that I did want to tell you and I was going to ask since Bart and Dan are here there was the question in the minutes about two items one was repair of the benches at um, the green um, 
on Blue Hills and Park and the benches at the police department. I have seen that the benches at the police department have been repaired. I did notice that. I don't know what happened at um, uh, Mary Hill. Mary. So at Mary Hill, um, you're, you're right. The benches are in pretty rough shape and Glenn right now is investigating uh, purchasing replacements for the benches versus those older um, handmade benches. We just don't have Jimmy Nyland, who was our in-house carpenter. I guess we'll call him our carpenter. He's retired. We don't even have a replacement for him. So he had replaced one of those benches maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking for um, uh, a, pur a purchase replacement, a similar type of structure, something that you know would mount into the ground. So we're, we're looking into replacing those other benches that are there. So would you want those benches to be um, uh, similar to what Dave Malesko is using throughout the town now? So we have some continuity? We could, as long as I can secure them to the ground. I, I think, aren't those, I think they are, but I'm not sure. Gwen, do you have your hand up? I can't tell. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I just wonder if, you know, I, I don't know. At one point I heard like Jonathan was saying the benches were like an extreme amount of money, which seemed kind of like not necessary, but, um, but yet it would be nice to have some continuity with the benches if possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look, I don't know. Uh, I'll look at what Dave's been putting around town. Some of those some of those purchased, you know, industrial strength, you know, benches meant for recreation, they are expensive. You know, yeah. I was thinking of maybe trying to get something very similar to what's there, something that doesn't have a back or arms on it. I mean, those were just flat benches. Um, but we'll look at what Dave uh, has yeah. been buying and, and we'll see if we can, we can, we can match those. I, I don't have a problem. As long as I can secure them to the ground and they're heavy enough so they don't walk. Uh, I'm fine with that. Okay, because and uh, they are utilized. That's the only thing I want to say. Yeah, I do. I see people there going by having like uh, there was some church having some kind of. They had their signs out and everything. They had sitting on the benches doing something, and there are always people sitting there. Yeah, no, the benches definitely get used. Hmm. I think, in my opinion, the benches are a better idea. I don't know how everyone else thinks, but because some people do turn around and look into the park portion of it, and mm -hmm. it gives the option without having a back, they can turn around yeah. the, for the bus coming up the road. So I, I think the bench style would be the preferred, in my opinion, to, to maybe look into as opposed to something with a back on it. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense because the park is like 360 degrees, so you could use it either way. And, and there are small benches over where the weeping cherry tree is. There are some uh, concrete benches there, I think, or concrete or whatever they are. Um, so if somebody's kids are playing, they can turn around and watch them playing in the, in the area there. So that I, I recommend that. I think that's a good idea. Um, okay, so that was in the minutes. I just wanted to... to Make sure, Joanne, that you knew that that could be in the minutes. So um, if it, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? Um, I make a motion. Lucy moved to accept the minutes. Who seconds? Mary. Mary second. Um, do I have approval from everyone? Raise your hand. Okay. I, oh, I can see Wendy. Yes, thank you for raising your hand. Yeah. And okay, so approved. And we'll move right into. Um, I'm gonna, I started with new business this week since Dan, you were um, here for the presentation and welcome Bart. Everybody was impressed when Bart came to stay with us last week and uh, last month. It's already seems like last week and talked to us. And so if you two want to have any remarks about anything that we need to know or that's going on for the next couple of months or. Yeah, I can give you a little bit of an update. Um, you know, we, we're, we're going to be working on our last road for resurfacing starting Thursday. So we are kind of winding down from road work. Um, we have a little bit of, we, well, we did a lot of overseeding this fall. Um, we, did our, we did our building. I don't know if we'll share in your you're probably at our building more than anybody. You know, we, we for, for everybody who, for the department that does all the maintenance in town, our lawn was pretty sickly. 
So we overseeded our lawn. We, we took a little, little time and, and, and took care of ourselves. Um, so we've done some overseeding. We did, we did a little bit of work up at 460 Tunxis um, at the park, more associated with cleaning it up for the um, performance that was held last Sunday. Sunday? Was it last yes. Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Bart has, um, Bart's kind of developing in his mind and we're going to, we're going to come back to you guys, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to salvage out of the Prosser library. We, we don't really want to heal it in and kind of hang on to it, trying to find a home for it. We kind of want to, we'd like to transplant and move it all in, in one shot. So like the cypress tree at the library, we were thinking potentially, um, if you thought it would be a good addition to the arboretum, um, but we're, we're trying to we're trying to identify locations to move the stuff so we're only doing it once. Um, you know, there are some rhododendrons on the north side of the building. Some of them are probably good candidates for transplant. Some are a little bit, maybe they're a little older. But we were even thinking of maybe bringing those up to 460 Tunxis and pushing them back into the woods, kind of beyond where you did your plantings last year. Um, you know, so we're, we're just trying to do that. We got a, we, we got a, I don't know if it's a pin oak or not. I don't know what it is. We got an oak tree that we've had healed in over at um, Mustad Road, which is, a, which is a, just a, a piece of, you know, random property that we use for material storage. We're going to bring that up to Vista Gardens on the corner of Adams Road in Duncaster. And we're going to plant that um, where we had to cut down. That was a maple tree there, wasn't it, Sharon? Yes. That was a maple. So we had to take that down last year. So we're going to replace that tree. In addition, there was a big brass plaque up there that um, was put in back in the 80s, late 80s, um, with some information about the, about the Vista Gardens property. Um, we've got a rock. And we've got a uh, monument company. I got to plug my uh, laptop in. It's going to run out of battery. Bear with me for a second. Um, so we're going we're gonna to mount that plaque to the boulder that we put in. And the boulder is in place now. So I'm not exactly sure when the monument company is going to get out there. But we're, we're putting that in. Um, you know, we got a little bit of grounds work that we need to do at our building. You froze. I think we, we just lost Dan. He froze. Oh. So what, what he's saying, Sharon, is we have some work to do at our building. We're going to recreate the memorial that we have around our flag as well. Um, and, uh, and to go back to the stone at the Vista Gardens location, as opposed to being wood, we thought it'd be a better site, more permanent to have a large boulder uh, with inlaid with the plaque in there. I think it'll be much more aesthetically pleasing that way. Um, once it's in place, we can potentially take transfer some of the plant material from the uh, Prosser Library up there. Uh, I, I'm trying to put together plans so that we all together as a collaborative group accept what it is uh, and where we're going to place these these items here. You know, we have a blue atlas cedar down there. We have an old gold cypress, is pretty large. I think we can save them uh, in my mindset. Um, so there's some good plant material, as Dan was saying, uh, the rhododendrons, there's two that are, I'm sure we can retransplant up at 460. I think it's a great location for it. Um, the other two, they, they have a lot of years. They've been here longer than me, <laughs> which is, which is quite some time. Um, so I don't, it would be a, a few, a lot of effort in to do that. Um, I'd like to see the blue Atlas cedar go into the arboretum. That's the tree that gets, you know, 40 to 60 feet tall. I agree with um, you. I think it'll, I think it'll be ideal. It's a great yeah. location for it. Yeah. You know, um, and, it, and over there, the subsoils over there, it's got a, lo a lot of clay subsoil. Um, so I, I think it'll do well. well. We'll amend the soil as we plant it, obviously. Um, one of the main reasons uh, that we want to, once we pull it out of the library, get it in the ground right away, It'll, have, it'll be more dormant at that point. You know, the tree, any plant material will be more dormant and we can reduce the amount of watering to, to make it survive for the springtime 
and get the air pockets out of there because we know air pockets will kill a uh, root system. So that, right. so so that, that would be good. Maybe um, a few of us can come and meet with you and uh, or if any on the committee would like to meet with me and Bart and whoever, Dan, would like to come, we could talk about what trees should go where. I love it. I, I, that's a gr it's a great idea. I think uh, a collaborative working together. Um, I have, a, as some folks have met Mike with Duke already, I have a pretty knowledgeable landscape guy who's been doing a pretty well job, you know, for all of us, for the whole community. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure he's involved as well. But, uh, yeah. And this, this, can you guys hear me? I'm, yes. I'm yes. Back on Dan. Yep. Um, yeah. No, I froze. My battery was dying. Um, yeah. And now's the time to do it in the next like six weeks. You know, we got our little lull between road work and uh, when, you know, when the ground freezes up and we're into snow plowing and, Everybody gets real grumpy and real miserable when snow season comes. <laughs> so. Well, also, we did talk, and it's still on the table, it, it, because we got the go-ahead from Stanley, was the center garden at Town Hall where the viburnums are. We've talked about cutting them back and moving them. Um, I think the soil is shallow there. I could be wrong, but I think it's gravel underneath. Um, it, I don't think they dug very deep. So it, I don't know how quite how we would move them, but would, we'd like to give consideration to whether we move them all or we move like three of them and leave one there or two there. I think that's something we've got to decide. And those could be moved either on the south side of... Um, the town hall, you know, where all that mulch is up against the building, but it wouldn't be against the building. On the south side, there's just mulch. We put a, a red bud over there last year. Do you know where I'm talking about? Isn't that where all the lilies are? No, no. Up above the building itself on the south side, I think Stanley's office is above it. Um, it's just mulch. It's just a large oh, mulch area. Yeah. On the Bloomfield Avenue side? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, why don't we just, why don't we make that a, also a topic of discussion when we meet out there? Right. We should, because I'm not sure if that's the ideal place, but I would think Bart walked around. We also looked on the other side, in the back side of where Republic is, you know, we have areas over there that could, because mm -hmm. the viburnums need to go in an area where we don't have to prune them every year, where we can let them grow and just sort of become a, maybe a privacy area or something. But I don't want to put them anywhere where we've got to start having to do a lot of maintenance to them. That okay. Would go, so we could talk. Yeah, about we'll put that. it down as a topic to talk about when we meet. And then maybe some of those we'll have to decide. We did talk about that area where we remove the viburnums we, Lucy and I have talked about, and I think Wendy too, that we would put in small dwarf evergreens, conifers there, that would be part of the arboretum. It would be our little conifer bed of the ar arboretum, but we wouldn't put in plants that are gonna grow tall like these viburnums did. It would be more something. And we talked about, I don't know if, Bart, if you remember that some of that bluestone we've been saving, we would create a path that would go from one side um, to the other side of the circle. So you could conceivably come out and, and walk from to the middle of the garden there. And, and eventually we'd like to put in some little flat benches, not with, not with uh, again, sort of just small four foot benches that are just seats, not backs to them that you could sit in. It's gotta be in a design form, but that was the concept that we discussed okay. last year. Okay. If anybody has anything, please talk up. You know, these were the things we've talked, so I appreciate it. Um, that sounds great, Bart. Well, you want to set a time up for uh, when you want to do this, as long as we're all here, set up on the calendar so we know if everybody can do this. This week is out. Next week is the first week in November. Um, I guess sooner better than later, right? Yeah, I, I would say starting the, the week of November 7th, Sharon. Okay. If we can, this way it'll give us time. Everybody can have a little input as well. Uh, they can reach out to me, whether personally or through my email, um, which I'll be glad to give out uh, to have their input as well. Well, they can write to me and then we'll talk about it and then we'll get back to you. Correct. Because I'd, I'd like to have it as much as I can get done before Thanksgiving. 
um, if, if we can get it done by that time. Um, I understand we'll have to take an assessment of material at the Prosser Library to take an inventory of it. Um, not a problem. Um, yes, and uh, please know that we've already started taking material out. Okay. We've already taken um, sedums out and planted them over in front of the electronic sign across from Town Hall, Tatiana and I did that. And um, I dug out the euonymus that were out in front of the sign in the front. Well, actually, Tatiana dug them out. And those, I think we're going to put at town hall. So we have those. OK. okay. So we have done, we've done, that's just small stuff um, that we've, we've done, some of the perennials. Um, what about the memorial tree of the dogwood? that was dedicated to one of the librarians who died. I, I looked at that today, Sharon, that, that dogwood is compromised. It, it's uh, one half of that tree there. Um, you know, can we move it? I, I, we can move it, not a problem, uh, along with the plaque that goes along with it. But we might, we're gonna probably have to fertilize it or potentially have to replace it next spring because of the decay I see in it uh, on the one side there, uh, yeah. on the Mountain Avenue side. Dogwoods are very sensitive tree, as you know, so they're very susceptible to diseases. Um, so, um, you know, for attempt, you know, at least attempt, I'd like to attempt to, you know, keep it as well, but uh, I don't know if it's going to really survive. I looked at it today. Really? Okay. Is it a Cusa or is it a uh, Florida's? It's a Cusa. Okay. So, um, does the committee have any thoughts about where they'd like to see that dogwood go? Because we could put it at the uh, Farmington River Park, you know, mix it in and have a sign so people could see it there. Or uh, um, I don't know where else there's. Um... Because we can put the, you, and you're correct on that. We could put the bad side towards the woods, leave the, you know, this way if there's a failure, a failure, and, um, and then just replace the tree properly with the plaque um, at, at a different location. But I, I truly don't see that tree surviving for years and years and expanding like it should be able to. Yeah, and maybe, I don't know, it's not native. So maybe, I don't know, re thinking about that again, or maybe maybe it should go in a different place if we're just, you know, there are other places we could put it and hide one side of it. So something to consider. Okay, group, think about that and maybe have some suggestions. Um, okay, all right, so we, what about, um, is the seventh? Do, do people interested in uh, Monday the seventh? If anybody's interested, Lucy, Wendy, are you here? Are, are you here, Wendy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't do the seventh. Okay, Wendy can't do the seventh. I can do uh, uh, every day that week, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I can't do Monday or Friday. Okay. So what about the eighth? That's fine with me. Not a problem. I'm flexible. All right, and but now Lucy works, so we we have to. What's your schedule like, Lucy? Yeah, it just it matter, you know, decide what the time. But I just remind that the eighth is election day. Oh, <laughs> oh, forget that. Hey, yeah, forget that. Nope. Yeah, Thank okay, you. we won't be doing that. No, everybody will. Um, so that brings us to the ninth. Um, um, the ninth. Well, Lucy, what's your schedule? Because you're the one who I, I, the ninth. I work all day, but I can take off from work to meet you. You know, whatever time. Okay. I just have a, a firm commitment at five thirty. So okay. Well, I would say do it earlier in the day and get it done. Now. Maybe we do it early morning. Is that what work for you? Can we do I, it? it works for me. Yeah, so Wendy says yes, Lucy, yes, maybe we start it first and get it out of the way, like eight o'clock, or I don't know, nine o'clock, whichever people, Lucy, yep. Wendy. Five. Eight o'clock, eight o'clock sounds good to me. Okay. Nine o'clock, I'm eating lunch at nine o'clock. Yeah. Eight or nine, okay, so we'll go for eight, okay, and then we'll have lunch with Dan at nine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so November the 9th at... Um, eight o'clock and where shall we meet you Bart? Prosser Library please. Okay Prosser, okay that's a go. All right Joanne will get that in the minutes. Um, okay thank you very much for that. Now which brings me to 
the next thing is that we have bulb planning. We have um, about uh, 1,200 bulbs, 980, somewhere in there, bulbs to plant this year. And um, I was thinking that we would plant them the Friday and Saturday of the second week in November, which would be the 11th and the 12th. Now, I have had ABB who volunteered to help us at Farmington River Park say that, it, that we, they would help us plant bulbs if we gave them enough time. And if you would like it, all of you, we could approach them and say, will they help us plant the bulbs just in the front of um, the town hall? Okay, and then all the rest of the bulbs are alliums, and I think that we could handle that and reach out to some of our volunteers on the volunteer list that Henriette has and see if they would want to help do that. Now, how does that sound to you, or would you prefer that, like last year, we got all volunteers from the community to help us plant in front of town hall? Suggestions? Go with what we can get. Okay. Wendy says a volunteer is a volunteer. Go with what you can get. <laughs> Don't disagree. Okay. All right. Well, I'll reach out to the group. Um, I'll reach out to, I think his name was Joe, um, at uh, ABB and see if they want to do it. Now, the thing that I wanted to know, the, the last part that we have to do, Dan and Bart, is where the Norway maples are planted. And it's sort of like that area there. And it's in front of the charging station and that. Are there any underground wires are there? Because I wanted to offer the suggestion, and I don't know if you have any at DPW. I have two, and I think Risa has one, is to take augers with a, a electric, a, you know, electric, not electric drill, a gas powered drill, um, or a battery powered drill, actually, a battery powered drill. And you put the augers in, and then you dig the holes and put the um, the uh, bulbs in that way. To, you need two people to do that kind of planting. Or we just take picks and we pick away at it. And then we just make big areas and stick the bulbs in that way. They're, they're bulbs, so they need to go down at least five or six inches deep. No matter what, when you're using a mechanical tool, we'll have to do a CBYD in that area because there would be wires from the charging station. And if you're a member, Sharon, there's some old... Uh, fabric in there that someone yeah, yeah. did it and you know how that it's a pain to get through that material yeah. Sometime. yeah so we would just have to do a cbyd no matter no matter whether we're doing it with a pick i think it would be a, a better recommendation okay so yeah, and you're only going down six inches so i really wouldn't you shouldn't be in any conflict with anything we no. didn't get cbyd for any of the other area but we weren't near the charging station um the other option is, I think you guys came in, Bart, and you kind of dug that away for us and gave us some area. And then we went in and it was made it really quite easy for us. We just put the bulbs in. I yeah, think. but we, we do a CBYD. If you oh, dig yeah. it, we do a CBYD. Yeah, but did you do one for last year? For oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, because we used the roller tiller, I think, and we, we, we dug that mechanically. Okay. Well, so that's my question. Can that be dug mechanically, that last part that we have to do? Because this like is a one-time did. deal. Once you do it, we don't have to keep doing this. Yeah, we could do it. You um, just have to just go out with a paint can and just mark out the corners. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I'm speaking for Bart, of course. But... <laughs> <laughs> I heard Bart say, yes, that's fantastic. <laughs> no, it's not It's not a problem. That's if that okay. make it easier. That would make it easier. And then I'll make sure we have volunteers and everybody... I, who was there? Anybody raise your hand? That, Henriette was there last year. I think Wendy was there. Gwen was there. I was there. Yeah, Wendy was there. I mean, it was I was lost, there. Yeah, and Mary. And, yeah. and people, we got it done in a couple of hours, and it was, you know, it was really nice. And it, it felt really good to see what we were able to accomplish and what it looked like the following season. And if you notice, all the muscari is up now, all that green foliage is the little blue bulbs that'll bloom next year first. So, okay, that's good. So we'll take care of that. And then I'm putting together a, um, a, 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 a putting a 
uh, Excel sheet together that'll show you where all the alliums go. So we can decide who, who goes there. And, and maybe since you guys take care of different areas, I can get volunteers that say, hey, you know, here's four people. Can they go with you? And here's where the bulbs go. And you can take them out when it's convenient for you. And you can reach out to those people. Now, does that work for you? Or we can set it up and say, you know, on uh, a certain date, this is when we're doing it. And that's um, how we set it up. So. My vote is a Okay, Wendy says she thinks a certain date. Okay. I agree. Okay. All right, well, why don't I see when the volunteers can come? Because the volunteers like coming during the week. So quite possibly they could come on November the, um, uh, the it'll either be yeah November the 11th or 10th and then we schedule the 12th weather permitting to do the other bulbs in the area how does that sound is that any holiday what I can only do the 10th I can't do the 11th for anything no no that's not for you that's for the volunteers from ABB the volunteers from BBC yeah. would be the 12th the Saturday Saturday the 12th does that work for everybody? Saturday the twelfth. Is 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 that anybody's any president's holiday? <laughs> okay, okay. So the twelfth. I will we'll set that up to reach out for volunteers. We can put it in the messenger to reach out, or well, we'll reach out to our volunteers that we have. Let's go to them first. So the twelfth, November the twelfth. Okay, and we'll do the others the tenth or the eleventh. Okay. Good. So um, everybody, we're not doing it on the 5th, because if any of you are interested, November 5th is Shred Day, and Paul is always looking for volunteers, so if anybody wants to show up and help with that, just let Paula know that, that uh, we usually go there. And they that so many people come that they're usually done by 1 o'clock, so they like people to volunteer for 9 o'clock on to help. And uh, let's see, they also put on your calendar. This is a really good a walk to go to. Jake uh, Bion Giovanni is going to be giving a talk, Trees Without Leaves. And he identifies all the trees by their silhouettes and their bark and stuff. It's, it's very instructive. And that's on November 19th at Hawk Hill, Hawk Hill Farm. And that's there's a little discussion back and forth. It's either 10 o'clock or 11, so I'm not sure yet. I thought it was from 10 to 12, but I saw Paula put 11, so we have to find out about that. And that's all the new business, I think, um, that was getting that done. Oh, under and all the rest is old business. So let's go to just a quick summary. I haven't talked to anybody about your maintenance this month. Um, any questions? I'll start with, I know Henriette's kind of been out, so I don't know if you or Gwen had an opportunity to look at Mary Hill this month. Okay. I did not. Okay, so we're going to need to go by. I don't, it's sort of the time where leaves are coming down, and I don't know, what's the leaf schedule, um, Dan or Bart, for how you do that? Well, we, we, we've prepared our leaves already uh, for leaf season, so we're, it's it's they're just inundated. They're falling really quick this year. So we're just yeah. going to hit every location the best we can. Um, why, hopefully they're drier, the better we'll get it. And we'll recycle the, we've already have a plan in place for the recycling of the leaves that we, and what we're going to do with them Okay. Uh, for this season. Um, I don't, there are certain areas I know that you wish that we leave the leaves on there. Um, you know, but some of those locations are near buildings and promote mice to go inside of our buildings as well. So we can discuss that together on a side note, Sharon. Um, okay. It's easier for our staff to clean the leaves up now um, because once we have one snowstorm and we don't get them all, then we're, we're, in, we're in trouble a little bit for springtime. It's a okay. lot of extra work in the springtime. Okay, I'm sure we can work that out. So you Correct. and I can discuss that. Um, yeah. I, I know, I, I think they're critters that come up right to the town hall because I've seen lower branches kind of eaten off the winter berries to the back of the, um, the building there. And I it's gotta be rabbits or something coming in there. I don't think they're mice, but um, uh, okay. So we'll deal with that. And um, 
it, let's see. So the maintenance for the town hall, Wendy and I are going to take out the cannas after the first frost. Tatiana is going to take out the cannas at the library, and she's going to store those for the winter. I'm going to store the cannas after they dry in the blue recycling bins that we have from DPW. And um, I will go and help Joanne and Risa do the swimming pool after the first frost. We'll go and pull out the cannas there. Okay. And um, I think, Wendy, do you still have some more sedums? Do you still have more sedums? No. Okay. I have two buckets. Okay. So Wendy has some sedums that we can plant, sedum autumn joy at the town pool. Our goal is to eventually not have to put too many annuals there and just have it be very sustainable. So the only thing that the um, DPW has to do is come in in the spring and cut down the grasses that are to the left of the garden beds. Okay, and we'll take care of all the rest. And once Bart, now that's a bed. Once we clean everything mm -hmm. up, do you have an objection to keeping some of the leaves in those beds, sort of as a mulch for the winter? Well, that's where you and I can you and I can talk about that okay. uh, on a sidebar, please. Okay, all right, fine. If we can't, we can't. Okay. Um, so that's I think uh, that's all the places where the cannas are. There are some in the flower pots at 330 Park and the senior services, but I'll leave those up until we really can't do it anymore. I've ordered greens to put in those pots once the frost come. And Dan, I like, or is it Bart, that um, maybe after October 31st, all the hanging baskets at the town hall could be brought to my nursery and put right next to the greenhouse 18, which is the greenhouse towards the back. I have two, so it's not the clear one. It's the one that's white, has winter white plastic on it. And then yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll put it in. Okay, because we changed them out. We put those away for the winter and then we'll have other planters, to. but we can bring those down. And what was that date again, please, Sharon? Well, I was going to say after Halloween. I mean, the weather's been so warm. I, I haven't minded if they stayed up. Um, so the 30, 30th is Wednesday. Anyway. I mean, if the weather stays warm, Bart, we could do it the first week in November. I don't have, Okay. We don't have to, you know, like they're fine now for a while. And Bart, all the irrigation is off now, right? That's correct. And so the green machine has been instructed to uh, blow out all the systems. Uh, so, okay. So if all the irrigation is off now, we want to plant something into these spaces. How do we water? Can we turn on the water at the corner where the spigot is? Yeah, you can use the spigot. Okay, so we can still use the spigot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that when irrigation usually goes off mid January? Uh, mid, -January. Uh, mid October. Uh, well, yeah, we shut the systems down once. You know, once we start getting some moisture and then we, we, it depended on, you know, what kind of rain we're getting. But usually right around the 1st of October, we, sh if we can, we shut them off. And then towards the end of the month, we start winterizing. Okay. As you can understand, we went through shell shock with the amount of water we applied this year <laughs> from the MDC. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why we'll try to be more drought tolerant plants. Um, um, okay, just a, a note on the trees for Bloomfield. The event was fantastic. We had over 100 people come through for the two performances, and the town manager came, the mayor spoke. Um, Dan, uh, Dave Malesko said that the park looked the best it's ever looked. So, thank you to DPW for that, for coming out, and for the uh, volunteers who came and helped us, and for Mike who came and put the mulch down at the end where we had to move it, and for Kaz who moved the portage on, not the portage, the trash basket and moved it over. So, everything seemed to do well. Unfortunately, I've heard that there have been um, He's <laughs> doing uh, wheelies on the new grass that's being planted, but I was up there and I put soil down on the seed bed where they put the leaves to do the wildflowers and it didn't look, it didn't look like it was damaged or not. So maybe that was only that one time that somebody saw something. Um, but they're definitely there. So we need to figure out some way we can talk, reach out to these people and see if we can 
figure been it out. Relatively quiet with ATVs up there for the last several months. Well, the night, the day of the performance, you could hear them in the woods. They were really going. And one guy came out in a full suit in his bike, came out onto the road, rode out of the park. Nobody said anything to him, but, um, you know, they gave him glares. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe there's something we can figure out this winter how to deal with that. Um, so the the um, they might the JDPP is asked if they might come back next year. I'm hoping that you know they there's been discussion about it. So it, and do another performance in the fall, but we'll know as it goes on. And um, there was an article David wrote a review of them, and we put some pictures in the messenger that appeared in this week's messenger. So they got a lot of coverage from the town, and uh, I think. There a lot of people came up there and said they never realized that the Farmington River Park existed. So I think we will have a lot of new people come visit the park. Um, okay, tomorrow, big day. Oh, well, um, yeah, so, oh, I just the Trees for Bloomfield Appreciation Party. Those of you who came, thank you so much. I was really proud to have the BBC there as tree keepers, Mary. Mary Bell, Gwen, Joanne, Henriette, Risa, all served behind the table. And uh, that was kind of nice. And um, it was a great event. And thank you, Dan, for coming and handing out the documents, the appreciation uh, certificates. The, I have to send everybody the photos, the smiles on everybody. It was just very moving. It was it was definitely, they felt like they were part of something. So many people have said they can't wait to do it next year again. So <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, but they, I, we did say that if you planted a tree, those would be the people that you'll go and look in on at the six month interval. So that will be something that we can work on doing the winter for the Trees for Bloomfield initiative. And the uh, October 17th was the closing of the photo contest that Paul has been working up on, on, and that's for the Trees for Bloomfield. And we'll probably do the same thing we did last year. They have like two or three judges this year judging it. And then we'll have a uh, gallery opening at um, 330 Park in December, but that hasn't been set up yet. But I think we did that the last, Oh, we did that like around the 8th or 12th of December. So probably we'll do it around that same time again. Um, December 3rd, important time. That's the Christmas parade. And I know that DPW will be, when will you be putting the lights up on the trees and stuff? Probably be right after Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, okay. Yeah. Got to look, I don't know how many weeks, but yeah, usually we start right after Thanksgiving. Okay, I please ask again that the DPW not trim the uh, winter berries. You can put lights around them, but please don't cut them back. We didn't cut them back last year, and you did a nice job of putting the lights up, so it, we, okay. we don't want them cut. And um, we have the deer, you know those deer that we got? The, <laughs> you find on the side of the road <laughs> i did no the woman it turns out i knew who the person was and i stopped her and asked her if i could have them and but i want to get some solar lights for them. and so do you have them at your because the lights didn't seem to work last year so i took them and put them over sort of in one of our gardens out near the front and so we wanted to sort of do that again but just put little lights on them and if we get solar lights we wouldn't have to do anything they just come off and on at dusk yeah i mean you can just go to lowe's and we can just get a couple sets we have we have we had some i don't know if we have them anymore yeah or i can order them online but i just wanted to make sure you had the deer and we could yes we do yes we yeah do. we do yeah okay so that that was one of the things and i did buy um um birch trees that are lit to put in this the atrium at town hall because last year the fire marshal was a little he was not happy seeing um, mm. live stuff in the center there. So I figured, well, let's not, let's buy something that we can use every year and not have to repeat. So we're not going to give live, uh, we're not going to put live things there this year. Okay. And that, 
that was just, but I noticed there's no outlets in the middle of the of the atrium, right? Did, did that, on, the, on the floor, you mean? Yeah. Mm, I don't think so. No, th but there's one on the corner by the rack. And so I figured, well, maybe I'll just put it there. And, and Yeah, maybe we can just put it in the corner or up, up yeah. the floor. Yeah, yeah, something there so that it'll do the same thing. Um, so tomorrow is the big um, Connecticut Urban Forest Council conference. And Dan is taking David Hager and Keith Martin, Lucy Eyre, and um, myself and David Mann and himself. And we're all going to represent the um, Trees for Bloomfield at their urban conference. And I can't believe it, but I'm the first one who has to speak. <laughs> and this, we're giving, we're doing little talks. They they have like four or five people giving talks, and ours, mine is the first one. So um, that'll be interesting. Remember, seven minutes. I, I, I timed it. It's at five. <laughs> okay. No, actually, it's at seven minutes and thirty nine seconds. Oh. Okay, that's all you only got to trim 39 seconds off. Uh, well, I'm just going to talk. They can cut me off. <laughs> um, they're going to do the, the Oscar music. They're going to they're yeah, going right. to play you off the stage. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to have and everybody's wearing their green shirt. So they're wearing their trees for Bloomfield shirt. So it should look impressive. And I'll, Dan, do you have a button? I'll give you a button. I uh, Yeah, I have one. I have one in my office, I think. And the last green shirt just came today, by the way. Yeah, I saw. I didn't say anything, but I saw it. They told me that. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you can bring that tomorrow and I can give that to Todd. Okay. Yep. Him. Okay. Yep. That would be great. We ordered a t shirt for one member who he needed a 4X. So we got him one and he was so excited. So we're going to give it to him when I get that. Um, that brings us down to our substitution for uh poinsettias this year we're going to do the holiday baskets but instead of baskets my suggestion is we use either tins t-i-n-s or we use uh, boxes that have like a clear front on the top and then you just put all the the cookies inside the box like inside a tissue and close it up so we don't have to touch it with our hands we can use gloves and wendy is going to talk about that and i just before we do that dan how many people work at DPW? No, oh, let's see. Probably 37. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, 37. Okay. I'll include in the facility staff too. Okay, 37. Okay. Five, seven, eight, and then there's, uh, yeah, there's got to be, it's right in that neighborhood. 37. Okay. Uh, I'll get the exact count tomorrow. I should so we know. Might do, we might do several boxes for there. Yeah. Um, okay. Wendy, would you like to speak first? You're on. Just, we're going to do different varieties, whatever is easiest for everybody to do. We had talked on um, Gwen got excited about doing chocolate um, as um, a, a little um, and just if everybody could let me know what they feel comfortable cooking, um, I'm going to make three or four different kinds, but I like to cook. Um, and um, I just need to know, um, I make my co cookies with nuts. Um, should I label it or should I not include it, the nuts? Um, I would say label them and put them in a plastic bag. And if we put them in, we'll put them like that so that people who can eat nuts can eat them and those who can't will take it out. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, I think the tins are a really nice idea instead of the boxes, only because who doesn't remember getting Christmas cookies or, or holiday cookies in a tin? Okay. That's, you know, that's... You know, my vote. Okay. Um, in uh, anything else? Yes, I'd like to make a suggestion about in oh, wait, 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 wait one second. She's not finished. Wait one second. Okay. I just um, know when we wanted to have a deadline, you know, when we wanted to put them together. 
together, whether we wanted to go to the um, senior center and put them together like an assembly line, or go to Sharon's and put them together like an assembly line. Okay. I didn't know what everybody felt comfortable with. Okay. Now, how many cookies do you feel that each person should try to make? Dan's office is 40 people. Um, I don't know. I mean, I usually make double batches of whatever I'm going to make. So if everybody's going to make two or three different kinds, double the batches, and then I'll think there'll be enough. So is that everybody makes 50 cookies all together, or they make 20 cookies? What what kind of numbers are you so, thinking? Um, a batch of cookies would be about two and a half dozen. So five dozen. Okay. Um, so make make a double batch of whatever offering you're going to have. I mean, um, so everybody uh, volunteer to make two does two batches of different kinds of cookies. So you know, twenty four each. You think that would work? Twenty four times um, eight of us. Okay. All right. Let's put that down for now, and I'll run that by everybody. Um, yeah. Okay. Are you finished now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to call on Joanne because she had her hand up next. Okay. Well, I had a suggestion, but I'll, I'll, we'll just go with this. How many, who are we talking about that we're giving these cookies to? I have the police department, the two libraries, uh, public works, senior center leisure services and what is the upstairs called uh, human, the, human services human and uh the town hall am i missing anyone well the town hall isn't one only one all right then who are we giving to in the town hall well wait we have to go back to dpw and now it's the engineering department right yeah but that's um they, uh, the 36 or 37, I think, includes them. Oh, that includes them now. But if they, if we walked into their little office, aren't they just two or three people? They're just two people. Okay. So I would, we would give them two. We just would give them a smaller 10. Okay. I think that's how we would do it. And then give you the DPW since you're, let's say you're 40. We do, maybe you can break it down for us how the groups are, how you'd want to disperse it, or do all the groups come through the town to the DPW? What's that again? Do all your men come or your people come to DPW office at one point? We're giving tins of cookies. So is it one tin? You know, it wouldn't be one because you're yeah. bigger. Everybody except for the um, custodians, five custodians comes to our building. But if you brought them all to us, we could we could make sure that they get distributed. So would they, if the five custodians, are they five different buildings? Five different buildings, yeah. So for them, maybe we do them in, in smaller containers so that they get their own separate one, because that would just be a very small amount. I mean, yeah. I do have another suggestion because um, I'm almost thinking, Wendy, maybe those should be in the boxes. Okay. Just those, because okay. it would be easier, and then they would have that nice presentation. It would be small. It would work. Okay. Okay. All right. And um, who else do you recommend, Dan? I'm still not clear who we're giving to. But well, that's what he's doing. He's going to give us the names of the other places we haven't mentioned them, only that they feel necessary, like. The police department, we're only going to give one. I don't know how many police people are in the department. Um, and maybe it sounds like you're going to need a big box for the police department. I mean, well, in the past, we gave them one poinsettia. I don't know who. It oh, to. so does the police department, does it end up going to Sharon and the chief? Or is there some way when the police come in, you know, do they have you know, like, you know what you might want to do is just make two trays, okay. one for the day shift, one for the night shift for the police department. That's not a bad idea. Okay. 
And if you bring them in, you can deliver them to Sharon. And then obviously they'll, you know, at th at two thirty or three when the night shift starts, they'll just probably put them in their break room. And same how, for the day shift. How many people in the police department? Night shift, day shift. Any idea? Not exactly, but they've got to be they've got to be thirty five people as well, I would think. But the exact numbers, I don't know. Okay, just an, an estimate is all we need. Yeah. I would say you're probably talking, you know, 20, 20, 22 people on day shift and probably, you know, 12 or 14 on night shift. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dispatchers and all. Okay. 12 on night, 22 on day. And are there, do, in the past, one year I did it, one year we didn't do it. And we gave poinsettias to the ambulance. Um, the volunteer ambulance, the center fire station, the Blue Hills fire station. But how do you feel? I mean, you tell us what you feel we should do. What you, I mean, I mean, you know, listen, I don't not quite know. How much. Yeah. So you're going to, are you going to do town hall too? Yes, we'd like to, but again, we need to ask you which of the departments, like I never gave it to the registrar of voters. I only gave it to like, I think I went to finance and we went to- Well, um, in town hall, you've got the uh, town manager's office. Yeah, we did. that's three people, right? That's one, two, three, four people. Four. Uh, three people, I, I take, sorry, three people. people. Um, you've got finance, which is one, two, three, four, five people. Okay. You've got tax office, which is two. You've got assessor's office, which I think is now three people. You've got the clerk's office, which is probably four. And you've got human resources, which is three. Planning and zoning and building department, there's probably, probably eight people. Am I missing anybody, Bart? No, you, you covered it. <laughs> Could I ask a question? Do they all have a common meeting room with like a break room or something that they that each of these offices use? Yeah, there's two break rooms. There's one on the first floor and one on the second floor. So if you wanted to, again, if you wanted to just go in with large tray of cookies and put them in the break room with a card, you know, people are in and out of there during the course of the day. So you kind of cover one whole floor just with a tray. It might just be logistically a little easier. So that sounds like a better idea. Two trays for the town hall offices. That's what you're suggesting. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. To make so it easy. If you do a tray, so we I'm throwing this question out. The logistics of you got to put the cookies in there and then we got to cover them with plastic. How do you deal with COVID kind of stuff? Because, you know, do we have to put the, can we just put the cookies and then cover them and let people open it up? I mean, almost has yeah. to be yes. or something. <laughs> COVID's done, Sharon. It's Nobody done. cares about COVID anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But Sharon, how about if we did for the town hall, two tins i mean i think i have two large christmas tins. you know when I, you know what i, I don't know yeah, yeah so we do two tins and we put them out and it's the same principle whether it's it is the same thing tin. but you can put a top on it and it doesn't have to be exposed so it'll also keep the cookies from going stale so mm -hmm. okay we'll work that out at least we have an idea 12 and 25 we can handle that is there anybody else in the town hall besides those people that you just mentioned not in town hall no what about I, india where is she She's oh yeah hall. that's one new office so that's strategic communications there's two people in there but if you're right. going to do one on each floor you gotta everybody go. will see it Right. Okay. So, so what we just need to know where the break rooms are. Okay. And yep. we'll, we can put that in there. Um, and I was thinking like the second week in December. Mm -hmm. that, how does that feel to everybody? Second week in December, we'll get them all done. And then, I'll make sure I get enough candy. <laughs> like, like December the 12th, you know, somewhere around there, mid-December. Um, 
because that's when people start getting in the holiday party mood. Um, and how about the rest of the area? Um, did we leave anybody? At the th There's only three in, hu in human resources, seniors, and... Um, then you got the senior center. You got yeah. three departments in the yeah, senior center. Yeah, we got center. that. We got that. But I don't know how many people are there. So do they have a breakout room too? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure if they if they have an actual break room. I Each department has separate offices. Yeah, we'll just. I don't. There's probably about five or six in three in, in Dave's office, right? <laughs> yeah, there's probably five or six in there. Same with uh, senior and, you know, social services probably has another, I, I honestly don't know the numbers, but it's probably in the same neighborhood. I would okay. say six people in each department. Okay. So social services, I call it human services, but it's called social services. Yeah. Camilla is social services, okay. senior services and leisure okay. services. Okay. All right. We got that. And I think that's everybody. I mean, we we don't really need to do the fire stations and the volunteer ambulances. I don't think so. You're already making a lot of cookies or something. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> so yeah. How many cookies are we all responsible for? I'm unclear about that. How many do you want us to bake? Five dozen. What? Say what? <laughs> oh. You know, yeah. let's see. <laughs> times. can we just do poinsettias? <laughs> 60 cookies. You know, you, there are all ways you can make cookies. Uh, well, we'll, 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 we can discuss it later. <laughs> um, so think about it. If you're the committee, if you feel you don't want to do this, now is the time. Think about it, and we can discuss it offline um, this week and come to a decision. But these are the things we need to know. And if, if, if you know, people can be responsible for watering. We can still do the other thing and give um, to all these different places and each give a point set it. We can also do that. Okay. No, I was teasing the point. The cookies sound good, but I think it's just, and I'm doing the easiest part is buying bags of candy, so. Well, let's think about it, okay? You yes. know, it is a, it's a little involvement, but it could be fun. But, you know, we might do it once and next year go back to what <laughs> you know, every other year we could do something else. Um, and if you want, if you if we do this and you want to assemble them, would you like to do it at my house or would you like me to arrange to have it at 3.30 Park? I just, you know, we'd go to a classroom and do it. Probably easier in a classroom. It would be easier, yes. Okay, then I'll talk to Dave about that. Okay. So, so where was it decided we're going to meet? Uh, well, we're going to see if we can get a room to um, set them up at 3.30 Park. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll find out. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'll go back to December 3rd. So the Halloween decorations. So for that date, we'll have all our hanging baskets. We'll need to go back up. So I already had Joanne and Risa volunteer to put the greens in the hanging baskets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's there. And, and then um, I guess we can bring them down. And then the wreaths, I, I getting five wreaths. So Dan, it was my understanding they're not moving out of those buildings till January. So we are going to give wreaths to the library. Um, Have you given wreaths to them in the past? Yes, every year we've given them wreaths to hang on the front door and the back door. But you know, we could reduce it. We don't have to do as many. We could maybe just, I don't know. Most you, might, you might want, if they're going to be moving out in January, they're probably going to be moving stuff before then. Right. You know, they're going to be in transit mode. So I'm not so sure it's really something that you have to worry about this particular season for them. Okay. And what about greens? We were going to put greens in their planters. I, I don't think there's any, yeah, that's fine because the planters are going to be, they're, they're not going to take the planters with them. No, but I'm hoping Probably. that we are the DPW. Well, we're gonna, yeah, them. but we can harvest those. We can harvest those when they vacate the building. 
Yeah, and because it might, wherever they end up, we may want to put the planters where they are or something, but they could get used. So I don't want them like destroyed or anything. I and think they're all in the Wittenberry Mall. I think. What? The library. No, I heard they got, well, I don't know how much, but they are going to 330 Park. Yeah, I don't think so. Or oh, did that change? I think it might change. Oh, guys. Oh, okay. And they were only talking about the computer lab. Oh, is that what it was? It was just a part of it. I didn't know what just it was. Just a piece. Yeah, it's just a piece. Well, even if we do it there, we can put the planters in front of where they are. Yep, yeah. yeah. we can do that. That so, and that would you wouldn't have to drag them as far. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, okay. So, and the only other decorations is I was we were going to get three poinsettias for the three thirty park because we would use them for our gallery opening, and they would stay there, and that would be their poinsettias for the um, the holidays. Okay. So we'll cut back on no, none for the library. What about the little library, the branch library? I think they're vacating at the same time. So we really don't need to give wreaths for any of those. I don't think so. So maybe we should just do a wreath at town hall. Uh, is there a place where we could hang a wreath at town hall? I, I never, because you have the sliding doors. So Well, everybody goes in and out of the sliding doors. Maybe we could hang it on the... Um, the glass for the um, the welcome booth there. Nobody's sitting in there anymore. Oh, okay. Put it right on the right on the glass of that. Right on the glass panels. Oh, there's a. You can have a hook and you can hang it. Yeah, we can. We can. We can okay. come up with something. Oh, we'll get a big wreath for there. One wreath. We have all yeah. the. Okay, one one wreath. Okay. We can do one at. What about DPW? Um. Yeah, we could put one in. No, nah, don't worry about us. We're fine. Okay. All right. Well, I still could put greens there. Still nice when you walk in if you have something. Yep. Else. But if you find yeah, a we planner, really don't we we don't really have a planner. I know of three that are <laughs> coming. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so I think that sells our Christmas holiday stuff. Does anybody have any other? questions about any other things that we're leaving out or that you think we should be doing? Mary, who's here? I see empty spaces here. I lost Risa. Gwen, are you here? I'm here. I'm here. Wendy, are there any other places? Lucy, Joanne, any other places where you feel that we need to do anything or not? No. No? Okay. All right. Well, then that sounds good. That'll finish it off. And um, so moving right along near the end, the uh, Instagram account went from 157 last month. We have 162 now followers. Um, the electronic sign by 330 Park, we put Mums in there and Liatris. And so I just, um, there's mulch at the DPW that we had left over from the trees for Bloomfield. So I'm going to take that mulch and use that and some of that compost and put it in that planter bed, um, which is at 330 Park <clears throat> across from the building. And then we can, and so that's available for us to use. And that brings us to public comments and committee comments. And I don't think there's anybody out in the-, the thing that I just remembered, I went, I did go to the, electro, the electronic sign earlier this month and uh, deadheaded a bunch of stuff. And I did notice that we had a lot of the liatris had, the bulbs have been eaten. Um, some critter had gotten in and, and really had a great, great time there. Did he actually pull the bulbs out of the ground? The bulbs out or, you know, they just fell down. He pulled it out and the bulb was half eaten. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we can put some more in there. Maybe we'll have to put some around. I pulled out all of those weeds that were there, uh, pulled all the sunflowers out and everything. So that's all gone now. And actually, um, Dan, if we, Bart, we need to pull all those sunflowers out that are at um, between the town green and the Wittenberry mall. So if we pull them all out, can we leave them where that dead pine fell over? Even though I know it, I think it's not, not sure it's our property, but you could pick them up, but that's where I could leave them to be picked up. 
what day do you feel you want to pull those out? I'd like to get them off. I, I don't want to, I want to get them out of there right away. Well, you, I'd like to, that's why I want to do it, but you know, I don't want to do it while it's raining. I'd rather come when it's not raining. So maybe I'll look at the schedule. Maybe Friday I can come. Mark, why don't we just do it? We're going to cut the grass maybe Friday, aren't we? Yeah, if you want me to pull them, Sharon, I'll just do it at my schedule, and then that'd be make it a lot easier for me. Oh, sure. If you want to do that, sure. Okay, yeah, we'll just pull them. We'll pull them. Not a problem. All right, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look and see if there are any sunflower heads left. I'm going to cut those off and take them, and we're going to use those to feed the birds. So, are, are, By the electric sign, did you dig those up? Are those out? Yeah, okay. they're all gone. They're all gone. But there's some on the corner of Park and the Town Hall, right? No, no, we took all those out. Today we, I thought I saw them. No. Um, I took when you on Town out. Hall on the right. Oh side. wait, I'm sorry. You're right. Across oh. the Town Hall, there is a. Cro group. Yeah. I, I'll go take those out, and Bart, if you guys are coming in on Friday, I'll just pull those all out because there's a large amount of plantings that need to be picked up behind the sign, the across from um from the uh, town hall. Okay. I'm, I'm, and do you know what she's talking about? So these these to pull out um, are across, they're right at the corner of um, town hall where the maple tree is. And there's a little planting bed with yuccas in it. We planted sunflowers there. I'll just take care of that. And there aren't that many, but out. I saw them today. Right. Yeah. right, I haven't taken those out. Uh, Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so you're gonna take care of those. Okay, so you're. Are you thinking um, Friday? Uh, yes. Yes. All right. So I'll do everything so it's all on the same day. All right. Mary, is there anything at the police department? Is there still debris on the side? Uh, no, there isn't. Okay. Um, we got a call to cut the grasses, so I did cut the grasses, Dan. I went the next day and cut those. So. The only thing left is whatever questions she wanted to know about the sidewalk. Okay. Where are we talking about the PD? Yeah. What about the sidewalk? She was asking questions about if the sidewalk was had been repaired, but only seen like one side, and you were going to check into that of what the other side needed. Yeah, I think we, I think we went out there and made some repairs to the sidewalk. Oh, okay. All right, so we've done the two things that were asked of us. I believe so, yeah. All right, and, and um, Mary, is there anything else that needs to be done at the police department that you think? Um, to tell you the truth, I need to go over and take a closer look and I'll get back with you on that, Sharon. Okay, all right, so you can do that, all right. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to mention is that I think, Bart, we're gonna have to pull up that Kusa dogwood that's in the, uh, on the right side of the pergola in that garden where the uh, bird bath is. Yep, that's definitely dead. So we can, I can pull that anytime. I can even pull yeah. it Friday. Yeah, and then I'll, we'll look for something to replace. I don't know yet quite what we'll do, but we'll find something for there. I and think that world of dendrum in the same place isn't looking too good either. No, I was going to do the bark technique and cut it way down. Hmm. And it'll look nice. I do have to comment. Bart cut the rhododendron that we put in last year, and it does look 100% better. Coming back. Give it a good haircut. Well, if it comes back, it comes back. Yeah. Sharon, Sharon, would you like, as a volunteer, I, if you'd like me to prune that rhododendron at Town Hall, I'll be glad to do it. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I'll accept. Okay. Well, great. You'll have someone do it, Bart, correct? Yes. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. When you find someone, let me know, and then I'll be able to thank them personally. Okay. I will never admit anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, we like to thank our volunteers. Um, so that concludes everything. Um, our last thing is I have something. Bart was here. I think neither Bart or Dan has been here for this, but this is just my little uh, public comments that everybody who attends my meetings gets to just make a final comment about anything they're feeling about what went on today or anything about any of the plantings we're doing or something. So I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner with Mary. If you don't. 
All right, I, mine's gonna be a uh, feel guilty type of thing because with having COVID, et cetera, I feel like I haven't been um, a responsible or active member of the Bloomfield Beautification Committee. And I am feeling better and ready to pick up the pace. <laughs> well, thank you, Mary. I'm glad to hear you're feeling better. Um, Gwen? Gwen just returned from Spain. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh. I'm exhausted. What can I tell you? I have jet lag right now. <laughs> but um, every, I, you know, same old, same old. Everything looks good. Mary Green, I think, really looks good. Um, as I drive by and I see people sitting and everything else, it really feels good about, you know, seeing that being utilized. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joanne? I think everything looks great. Uh, I think Vista Park looks beautiful. I just love walking down there every day and I noticed the new rock that they have there. So that was interesting to hear about the, the plaque they're going to put. Mary, I hope you feel you are feeling better. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You look better. She looks better. I definitely. Yeah, and I <laughs> thank think you. And, I think Henriette left, but Henriette had a little minor operation, and I think she I hope she's feeling better too. Um, <clears throat> um, who am I? Okay, uh, Lucy, uh, you're on. She's on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute. <laughs> there you go. No, oh, just. Um... You know, I think the town's looking really nice. I mean, I think that uh, I'm excited about the plans. I think we gave good feedback to them. I hope some of the, they'll listen to some of that. Um, but, and also the colors of this fall are just spectacular. Um, so enjoying, enjoying staring off into the, into the woods. The beautiful colors this year, amazing. Yeah. Uh, Risa? Um, <clears throat> well, I thought, your comments were really pertinent about the libraries. I look at a plan like that and I, you know, can't really, or even hear about their plantings and I can't go into the weeds, so to speak. So I thought that was like really constructive and interesting. It was an interesting analysis. And I guess it just shows how important it is to really know a site and you really know the site and they kind of don't know the site and what a difference that makes you know you go there once or twice and make this plan that has no connection to mm. the actual physical requirements of the site and 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 that was it was very interesting and uh, you know i think everything else um looks great and sounds great and onward and upward Okay. Great. We only have one more meeting. Our last meeting is next month. Um, Bart, might I call on you to say something? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be part of the, be back in the group again and, and have a positive input. Um, I hope everyone knows that they can reach out to me and, and, you know, we can discuss things out, you know, come up with the best plan of action for, for the whole community. Good. Um, Thank you, Bart. And uh, I saved the best for last, right? Mm -hmm. oh, that would be me. No. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> no, I just want to thank everybody for, you know, for their efforts. You know, volunteers like all of you make guys like Bart and I look good. So, you know, you really, you really uh, stepped up this year. Um, our grounds really did look really good, you know, and you can always nitpick and you can always, you know, we, we get, you know, we get complaints, but all in all, you know, if it wasn't for you guys, you know, we'd be, we'd be in, we'd be in a tough spot, you know. Um, uh, so I just want to say thanks to you and, and hopefully you all keep up the good work. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. And, and I bet she thought I forgot her and I was she was a call on her, but I would call on Wendy. Wendy, are you there? No, you're not a closer because I will be the closer, but you can speak. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I found today very interesting going over the plans with you and coming up with questions. I really felt 
more connected to the town other than the tree planting. Um, it was, I, I, I'm glad Mary's feeling better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gwen. Um, and I uh, can't wait to hear about your adventures, Gwen, and I hope that Henrietta is doing better. Um, I'm going to go and have a glass of wine. And that's, <laughs> that's it for me. All right. Well, I'll finish before you go for a glass of wine. I want to say, you know, Vista Gardens means a lot to me. It means a lot to my husband because we were responsible for the town buying that piece of property. And when we obtained it more than 20, 25 years ago, we sent, um, you know, notices around the neighborhood and got people to come in and help us plant the bulbs that are in the center of the property. And, and we've seen it grow and the maple was there. It was beautiful. And we planted gardens there, but everything changes with time. And while I was really extremely upset that everything got moved out of the center, you know, and we didn't recycle it or anything, you know, it, it, it looks better now. It, it's clean. It's, um, it's, it's simple, it's easy, hopefully easy for people to maintain, but it's a very special spot to us because people do come there. It's got a beautiful vista to the gardens and it's so incredible when the DPW came in this year and cut all the lawn down below. And within a week, it was like growing again. It, it's mother nature is just amazing to watch her and see how she performs. And so I'm very grateful that we are putting things back there, though, that we put a boulder and now the seven sun sign and that uh, um, and that an oak tree will be going in there and maybe possibly some of the plantings that we take out of the library, because it's a very special part of park in this part of um, Bloomfield, and I'd like to see it continue for another 20 to 50 to 100 years down the road. <laughs> so um, that's all I have to say. Our next meeting is the fourth Tuesday of next month. And um, if somebody would like to have a motion, make a motion to close the meeting, we will adjourn. Um, I move to close it. Second. <laughs> Well, yeah, you, you can get out of the bed now, okay? I'm not in the bed. I'm on my couch with, the, oh, with, okay. the, okay. with a comforter with a blanket on. Ah, okay. Um, Gwen moves to, and Risa second. And thank you all for coming and all in favor of adjourning. Uh, okay. Goodbye. Thank bye. you. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night. 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 Good night.